Well, uh, Sunny has requested a Sunday Live Hall song. So, you ready? Go ahead. No. <laughs> we probably should have a song. It's the Sunday Live Hall. It's the Sunday Live Hall. It's Sunday. We're live and we're hauling. We're hauling and it's Sunday. But first, we're going to show you some numbers, show you what we solve, and then we're going to show you our Sunday Live Hall. Really you were that. the kid that wandered around the house making up <laughs> songs all day long, weren't you? Well, I'm literally doing it now. So. You still do it. <laughs> yeah. How's that, Sunny? Is that good enough? No, that's bad. What? It's bad. It's bad. What? Maybe, maybe you have to ask. Oh, me. I am so sorry <laughs> that you're not impressed with my songwriting skills. No. I gave you the chance to do it first, and you're all like, man, I'm never do it. Man, I'm never do it. Well, just because you. So you're just here to criticize yes. me? Yes, yes, yes. It's yes. a lot of negativity that I don't need right uh -huh. now. See, Kara just gave me a round of applause. So, <laughs> how dare she's, you? She's sick. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, you know. Absolutely, take that. absolutely ridiculous. Uh, hey, everybody. I think uh, we maybe need to have Johnny write us another song. So, we have one for No Pants Friday. Excuse me. How can you disparage my song like that? And they're going to do some outsourcing? Yes. <laughs> Not cool. What's happening here? You touching your, my soda? Getting your drink out of my way. You're just a big cry baby today, aren't you? Yeah. Cry and the baby. Grammy nomination. All right, Karen. So now rude. we know you're sick and on drugs. <laughs> I hope they're good ones. Oh, well, yeah. My songs are always better when you're on drugs. Absolutely true. That is absolutely true. Anyway, what is up, everybody? I don't know if you know, but this is the Sunday Live Hall. Okay. I don't know what gave it away. This is the official Katie Wears a Misfits hat show. That's every show lately. <laughs> I'm going to burn this hat in her sleep. No, you're not. She has not taken Dana. it off since Christmas Eve. She's trying to burn my hat. What? You're yelling in my ear. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I yelling in your ear while you're saying that you're going to steal my hat and burn it? Mm -hmm. So rude. Anyway, Dana's here. She's downstairs uh, taking pictures using our photo studio. Our professional photo studio, professional, <laughs> to take pictures uh, for her own her own listings, I believe. Um, so just calling calling down for backup, a little mm -hmm. bit of backup. Anyway, yeah, seriously, thrifty Christy, I do need to hide it before I go to bed if I didn't sleep in it. Oh no, she doesn't sleep. I in don't it. sleep in it. <laughs> no. Uh, so Laura says, I'm in closed hell. I want to see some fun, hard goods. Listen, last week, uh, I know some of you were a little bummed out that all you, all we had to show you was lots and lots of clothes. I know. I didn't have any hard goods last week. No, it's the only thing that I sell. So that's how you know that like, if it was just me doing the show, it would be super boring because it would be like, here's another t-shirt and here's another t-shirt and here's another t-shirt. Mm -hmm. um, but Vicky this week got some really good hard goods. Um, really big and really heavy. big. I had to help <laughs> carry some stuff upstairs, but we have some some good stuff to show you. So I think that uh, you folks who like to source hard goods, I think you'll be happy because we, we've got some cool stuff. Um, but Sunny, you're right. T-shirts do rock. And speaking of T-shirts, I have some blow your mind T-shirts to share this week. Oh yeah, she kind of blow does. your mind, and I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Man. I'm really looking forward to to sharing some sharing the stuff that I got this week. Mm -hmm. um, she yeah, has, she has some really good stuff. Even even those of you that might be slightly bored by the t-shirts, which is me sometimes. I have to admit, I do sell t-shirts, but they have to be exciting for me to like get as excited as she gets about them. I so, love t-shirts. Okay, I love yeah. t-shirts. And I'm gonna show you souls, and I got a little lesson for you guys uh, when we're sharing our souls. I got a little lesson set up for you in my lesson plan. You so, have a lesson. In your I have a little lesson to show when we are sharing our sold highlights for the Were last week. Are you going week. to tell me about it or no? No, because it has nothing to do with you. Okay. <laughs> uh, gonna blow your mind. No, this isn't an after dark episode. Uh, I apologize. Well, we've never done after dark for the Sunday live hall. Mm -hmm. That's that's Friday. Um, but those are pretty good fun shows, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They tend to be fun. They tend to be fun. I don't They're know. Fun. Sometimes I think we, we can... actually have. We did one Sunday late when we came back from Michigan. Oh, that's true. But it wasn't all crazy. Um, we were just exhausted. Yeah. Uh, speaking of traveling, guys, we're going to be in Oregon. Two weeks from now, we're going to be in Oregon. We're going to be doing this show from my parents' house two weeks from now. Because mm -hmm. on the 21st, we're going to be flying into Oregon. 
And then we are going to do some sourcing Zilverberg style. Uh, my sister, Binky, and my mom, Jean, they're going to be coming with us. And we're going to hit uh, Valley Village, which is the same as Savers. And we're going to go to uh, the Goodwill Bins. Nice. And I'm going to take you to a regular Goodwill because Goodwill used to be my main jam back in the day. So what you're saying is we'll be shipping some stuff home from We're from probably going to be shipping. It depends on what we find. But, so, uh, but I'm looking forward to kind of basically... We're going to take a day out thrifting. Actually, there might be a couple other spots I want to hit. Um, we're going to spend a day oh, thrifting. We're going to take my mom, my sister. It should be super fun. So that'll be two weeks from now. We'll be doing that. Yeah. And, uh, and the if you Wednesday have show will be home. So we will be doing the Wednesday show at home. Friday, no pants Friday. We'll probably be on the fly. We'll have to let you know. That'll be an there. after dark. That's and probably that one, an after dark with Binky. And that one will have Binky in it. Maybe my, my mom, uh, which you think I'm silly. My sister's sillier. And my mom is off the mother effing rails. So we're going to have to bring my laptop. Yeah. So I don't, th I don't think we can trust that your parents have the appropriate. Yeah, we should, we should bring setup. the laptop for sure. Anyway. Um, yeah, guys. So yeah. And Ooh, Karen's coming to the meetup. Yep. And speaking of meetup. Speaking of meetups. Um, so Wade uh, from Wade's Ventures and. Um, Side Hustle Pros. Side Hustle Pros. Chad and. Chaz. Chaz. Sorry. Chaz and Trista. Uh, I don't remember what her name is, but I'm, I'm sorry. I'm I don't know you guys probably know who they are. I, we don't know them. Um, uh, just I just started following them on Instagram because I had yeah. never met them. But um, they have a huge following. They have a huge uh, oh, yeah. YouTube following and Instagram following, the whole deal. Um, I They're just over 100,000 on YouTube now. Yeah, I just don't know who they are. So I'm looking forward to meeting them. But they put together a meetup that they actually were kind enough to work around um, the time that we're going to be yeah, there so that we can be a part of it. Um, and it is at a bowling place. It's like bowling. Pizza, it's called a bowling arcade. alley. Yeah, but it's not just you a know, bowling alley. A, a bowling place. Um, but yeah, um, it's well, it had all kinds of things, not just bowling. It has like kids arcade and kind of stuff. Anyway, oh, yeah. so they rented out a whole half of the building. And I'm going to tell you that they definitely uh, put up some money because yeah. they're only charging $20 per person to go. And that covers um, food, shoes and the rental. Um, for for bowling so yeah. i i i think they, they'd have to have 150 people come for them to even to just just break even so really uh the 20 dollars is just to help cover the costs so if you guys are around in that area you should definitely come it's gonna be on the 23rd which is a saturday so it's gonna be four mm -hmm. four to eight p.m so it should be a lot of fun it's gonna be just uh, everybody's just gonna be hanging out there's gonna be people from all over noelle's gonna be there uh wade will be there uh chaz and trista will be there we'll be there and then Bunch of other people. A bunch that I of can't other people. Name. Yeah, um, I'm kind of excited Portland, about is it. it. Portland Pickers, I think, is their name. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so just a lot of different people. Uh, yeah, so let's get into it. And first things first, let's talk numbers. It's actually finally a not um, embarrassing week. Yeah, mine has definitely rebounded. And I, I actually posted um, earlier today. I posted on Instagram. So you guys should definitely be following us on Instagram. I used to do, we used to both do like our weekend numbers. Like Monday, we'd do a post where we take a picture of our packages going out and do a breakdown of the weekend numbers. But that didn't really tell you anything. It just said how our weekend was. It didn't give the full picture. And so since we've been doing this weekly thing on the show, we haven't really been keeping up with that on Instagram. And so now I just did a post where I did the last six weeks, um, our little breakdown thing and i'm going to try and keep up on that every sunday to basically just share it to instagram so, oh, you, so that was just yours that you did I didn't yeah know. I, I just showed mine um and so so you, you can do yours if you want to but uh i'm going to be putting mine up on sundays so that if you after the show if you want to like see it and like actually stare at it, i don't know whatever since we're just kind of showing it quickly here do you want to go first do you want me to go first what would you like to do I'll go first since mine was so dismal the last two weeks. I actually feel pretty good about this. This was a decent week. Uh, mine were worse than yours while I was doing. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's very, very true. Okay, go ahead. So, okay. So, this is for the week ending yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, Sunday to yesterday, last Sunday to yesterday. So, I had 48 eBay orders and five Etsy orders mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. a total. I'm covering your face. <laughs> <laughs> for a total of 53. So between so eBay was two thousand fifty four dollars for the week. Etsy was four hundred and eighty nine dollars for a total of twenty five forty three, which is a good week. Uh, anything two thousand and over for me is a good week, and I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. So my shipping again, my shipping is always going to be higher than Katie's because I have a lot of oh, hard yeah. goods. So I have a lot of heavy uh, items that go out, and I do free shipping on everything. 
Um, so my shipping was $435. The promoted listing fees were $77, which is a little higher than uh, average because I did up my percentage in a few categories. I'm trying a couple little things here to see how they work. And I'll let you know how it how it works out. I'm going to do it for 30 days and then I'll let you know if I have good results or not. Um, so total fees, including the promoted listing fee, when I have total fees down here, or when we do total fees right there, that is the eBay fees, PayPal fees, and promoted listing fees added together. So 375, I was rounded off, I used 12% of my total sales, which is actually a little higher since Etsy sales are, uh, Etsy's fees are lower than eBay's. So it, it's conservative, um, rounded off, and it's actually a little bit higher than they probably really are. I didn't do it per item. Yeah. Uh, so my total cost of goods, $155, which is really low. I had some good items. And then uh, let's see, average sale price, $48, which is up from last week. Mm -hmm. And my total net sales, $15.75. So, yeah. All right. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah. So like she said, uh, she's been doing a little bit of experimenting. She was talking about doing this thing with how she was doing her promoted listings and her sales for a while. And then the, like, uh, like last week, I think I was like, just do it. Just go ahead and do it. Just come mm -hmm. on, just try it. Cause she was getting a little nervous yeah. about some of her sales. And so she did. And so far it seems to be paying off. So we'll wait until. Yeah. I've got to get a, a good, like research yeah, and data. We'll, and then we'll tell you so far it. it seems to be, to be going all right. Um, let's see, Angela, thanks for all the great information. Uh, I'm not sure what that what that word is supposed to be. I'm something on eBay and did over 100k last four months after listening. Design to you. Ange, that's her. Um, oh, Design Ange on eBay. Okay, gotcha. Um, did over 100k last four months after listening to you. I'm pricing high. Feel free to check my sold on eBay. Uh, thanks again. Awesome. Very very cool. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. I, I did 100,000 in the entire year last year. So four months. That's awesome. You must be selling some real good high ticket items. Very very cool. All right. So my um so the last couple of weeks if you guys go and look at my Instagram post, like I said I had like the last 6 weeks including this week um posted and you can really see like where my numbers went and all of a sudden it was like the last 2 weeks they just bombed. And uh it was crazy. And I think it was you know all of that inactivity right after my accident um that kind of caught up to me and so i've been really hitting it hard for the last couple of weeks and just trying to like list really regularly a lot i'm finally back to where i'm sourcing at a regular level um and just going crazy and then this week seems like it paid off i'm up over a hundred percent for the last week it's yes nuts. all right so if you look at this um i've got ebay 33 outgoing orders etsy seven so a total of 40 orders. So not really a lot in, as far as volume goes. Um, my eBay gross sales, $1,905.58, almost $2,000. Etsy went up a little bit from last week. I'm still kind of slow on Etsy, but it is it, it does seem to be going up um, $388 uh, for a total gross of $2,293.58. Uh, my shipping is was $230.11. My uh, promoted listing fees, that's eBay and Etsy together, uh, it's down from last week. And I think a lot of that has to do with me adjusting um, my Etsy promoted listings. Um, so that's cost has gone down quite a bit. So my total fees, $354.26. And that, that's, I do it the same way that um, Vicky does. I take my total gross sales, multiply by 0.12. So that does, since eBay or Etsy has lower fees, that's actually probably over um, estimate, over estimate, overestimating it. My cost of goods, $272 or a little higher this week. I had a, quite a few of um, online arbitrage, like new items that I had invested a bit of money into sell. So that was good. Um, so my total net for the week, $1,437.21. What I'm really excited about is my average sale price jumped up this last week to $57.34. Last week it was like 40 something. Um, so that's awesome, uh, especially since I sell so many T-shirts. Like it, it can be harder for me to like keep the average sale price up because those tend to drag it down. Mm -hmm. um, what are you doing behind the paper? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> anyway, making faces. Yeah, I'm making faces probably. Um, so yeah, so I think that it, it seems like you know you we've talked about how after my accident when we weren't getting as much stuff done. I know Vicky saw an immediate um, dip in her sales. I saw an immediate dip in my sales, but then they kind of rallied um, on their own, even though I was barely listing anything. Um, and I went like 10 days without listing anything at all. They kind of rallied and were almost at a normal um, level. And then the last two weeks before this week, they just totally died. Both of us ever stayed, Totally yeah. died. And that might have I mean, been that it was just. It was like the worst time. Eh, but I had two weeks in a row where it was like, 
you know, 400 something net, 600 something. I mean, for me, that's, that's Painful. crazy, crazy, crazy low. Um, so I, I really feel like it has a lot to do with like how much I've been able to list in the last couple of weeks. Like I'm really finally back up at hundred percent dialed in as far as like listing and turn stuff and like burn. that. Turn and burn, turn and burn. You know it, you know it. Um, you just started marking free shipping and returns. Very cool. Yeah. Try it out. Try, try it out. out. At least try something for like nine, 60 or 90 days and see how it works for you. Uh, and to see if there's you know, an increase that you see. And Kara, you'll you'll catch up, honey. You were you were not listing and doing stuff because you were in the hospital. So it, it happens. So mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. All right. Um so yeah, definitely a total rebound in, in being back to work. Like this week was my second week of being able to do a full day of sourcing um and just like getting mm -hmm. stuff. And I was able to get all my pictures done yesterday so i'm like ready i've got a notebook full of stuff to list mm -hmm. and i'm ready to hit the ground running in fact today uh, we actually spent the first uh, few hours today working on the garage and like reorganizing mm -hmm. um our inventory and stuff and we're gonna do i think we're gonna do a little bit more of that yeah a couple more hours this after yeah That's for sure good. and then get some listing done um but i'm pretty excited about it uh john the 733 rate through for priority flat rate envelope is not available through private ship yet um they are working on it as, i'm guessing as they have said uh they've said to us directly a couple of times they are working on getting that they do that is not a rate that is available through any commercial based pricing or any commercial plus pricing through re to, to retailers yeah. so we think that ebay is eating maybe that 22 cents or maybe there's really a, or there's a mistake somewhere in their system great use it while you get it while you can through ebay but bjorn the pirate ship has sworn that eBay will not beat their pricing. So they're yeah. working on getting it. What I think is crazy is like, you know, before eBay and Pirate Ship had the same pricing um, on everything, and except for eBay didn't offer Cubic and uh, and only Pirate Ship has the simple export rate for international shipping. And now we go into this big, this big increase in uh, postage costs with the United States Post Office. And here's eBay coming in with lower prices on um, their priorities on their priority stuff for top rated sellers. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I feel like, you know, one of the ways that, that eBay I'm not going to I don't know, I can't say fails, but I feel like it's a misstep that it's like they don't even when the really good things happen. It's like there's something up with the communication where it's like they're not telling people this. Like right. you would think you would think is like, like hey we have the best price on yeah like hey look at this look books. at this thing this this extra perk that you get uh you know because i i know before it used to be like if you weren't top rated seller you did get a little bit of a high it was a little higher cost of postage on on ebay but you could just go to pirate ship and get the same top rated um plus numbers or whatever so i don't know and it's now like, there's no difference between top rated and top rated plus in your pricing on on, on as far as postage goes right, but postage. but you would think they would at least be like hey look at this. this is you can't get this postage anywhere cheaper i don't know why they don't do that it doesn't make any sense to me uh, i feel like you would think that they would want people to know when good stuff's happening but what, whatever uh sunny do i sell more hard goods versus clothing i've actually never done the breakdown i want to say it's probably about 50 50. Mm -hmm. um i probably should do the breakdown at some point yeah it seems like you always have a lot of boxes going out though and mm -hmm. that's usually your hard goods yeah i would say at least 50 50. yeah Anyway, I think my hard goods, I will say, turn uh, faster than clothing. Yeah. As far as um, length of time in the store and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got over 150 people watching right now. Right now they're here watching with us. Uh, so if you guys could give us a thumbs up, that'd be awesome. I if see. we hit 75, I will do a giveaway later today. What? 75 thumbs up. I'm sorry. Up. You didn't discuss this with me first. I mailed them out anyway. <laughs> I don't need to discuss it with you. Uh, Anyway, uh, seriously, guys, um, give us a thumbs up. And if we, yeah, when we hit 75, she'll give a thumbs up. I feel like you're going a little low. I feel like it, make them hit 100. There's 155 people watching. Come on. Mm -hmm. You can't get two thirds of those to like buck up and give us a thumbs up. I'm changing it to 100, 75, psh, whatever. 100. All right. All right. I'll do one at 75. If we hit 100, I'll do two giveaways. How's that? This is an outrage. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna do a screen share here and we're gonna show you the highlights of our sales. We had some good numbers this week, so you, I can guarantee you mm -hmm. we had some good sales to share with you. So let's go ahead and do that. 
All right, we're going to start with you. Ooh, look at that little Should offer. Respond for a hot, to offer. Hot air balloon t-shirt, guys. Just another t-shirt trying to get sold. Um, all right, what do you got? Okay, so this is just to bring to your attention. Um, well, hold on a second, hold on. Jimmy, Jimmy, you shut your mouth. I'm going to tell you to shut your mouth again. I'm not giving away any Metallica t-shirts. All right, go ahead, sorry. Rude. <laughs> so this sweatshirt I picked up for $1 at uh dana's super super secret hidey hole uh little charity store the other day and um i paid a dollar for it that's it a dollar for a sweatshirt did you tell dana about this about the uh, sale no not yet she can hear me though dana you're gonna be mad again in my ear she probably wouldn't have picked it up <laughs> this is not her style um so i paid a dollar it is a vintage t-shirt sweatshirt. And the only reason I bring this to your attention is because if you find anything that is United States Air Force Academy in a sweatshirt, look at some of the prices of what they've sold. Look up USAFA sweatshirt and look under solds. And it's not just this one. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> so I paid a dollar. I, I listed this and the very next day I had a bunch of watchers. <laughs> you wouldn't have picked it up. So you don't um, know me. <laughs> I would have picked that up. Oh. <laughs> so it sold the very next day. I took an offer for eighty dollars, and oh. uh, it sold for eighty dollars. I paid one dollar. Um, I probably could have held out more, but this was not a champion. If you were able to find one by champion, they're selling in the hundreds. I don't really understand why. I couldn't tell you. I don't know if it's just they don't make sweatshirts anymore. I don't really know. Anyway. Um, I, yeah, I took an offer and sold it for 80 bucks, paid $1. It's just a hoodie. Nice work. All right. First one I've got up now, this one, I wasn't really all that excited about it when I bought it. I was just kind of like, yeah, I'm going to get it. Cause pretty much anything rodeo or cowboy kind of stuff, uh, usually sells pretty well, but this one, it's not vintage. It's 2017. Uh, but it did have, you know, it's George Strait. It's, uh, embroidered all over the back. Um, it's a, it's actually a contestant one, contestant 2017. Um, and so I listed it and what's funny is I listed it for $69.99, but I knew it would go on sale, but before it even had a chance to go on sale, I had somebody come in and offer me, maybe offer me like $40 or something like that. And I came back at them and I offer, I did a, a, a counter at like 60 and literally like five minutes later, it sold to somebody else for the full price, $69.99. Um, so you know what? It's like I maybe I could have priced it a little bit higher, but I don't really think so. I, I think I just happened to hit like there were a couple people that saw it pop up right away and wanted it, whether they were contestants or they just want to pretend like they are. Yeah, I um, I think anything that is rodeo related always sells well. And George Strait, I mean that's like double branding right there. Double branding, yo. Double branding. All right, so um, okay, Sunny wants to know what country we ship uh, our items to. So yes, I I forgot to write these down, but I can tell you if they were shipped internationally. Or yes. Right. So as far as the sweatshirt, I don't know what state, but it was the United States. I, I'm pretty sure it went to the East Coast. I wanted to say New York. Mm -hmm. um, and yours, this was this was U.S. sold, right? Yes, this just went to the okay. U.S. I didn't have very many international sales this week. Maybe maybe two, maybe one or two, and I don't know if any of them are. Like I had higher. quite a few, and I, I'm going to talk about that. Okay. Soon. So okay, so the next one is for you. Ooh, girl talk, everybody. Let's get up a day line. So I always talk about board games. Um, you know, some people are happy to sell the board games or you know, and for parts and things like that. I tend to not sell them for parts. I don't want to deal with 10, 15, five dollar items here and there. But I only paid two dollars, maybe three dollars for this. It sold for 50. It was on sale, sold for $50.96. This happened to go to Utah. So it shipped for about $8. I think it was two pounds. Nice. We should have totally played this before you sold it. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been fun. Talking dating game. Dateline, everybody. Wait, hold on a second. I want to. And this wasn't listed that long. I want to say it was maybe listed for a few weeks. Look how dreamy he is. He's so dreamy, everybody. <laughs> you guys, wait. Is he the bad boy? What a hunk. Woo oh, whoa. No the way. Nerd. Whoa. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, I love it. I love it. All right. Let's go on to the next That was one. US. That sold, like I said, sold to Utah. Yeah. So I keep showing these. Um, I sold three of these, not all the same colors, but I sold three of these this week. And Sunny, all three of them went to Australia. These are the t-shirts that I bought from the guest website when they had their Black Friday sale. So they were $29 a piece. 
And I went ahead and bought a bunch of them. And I thought that a bunch of other people would do it at the same time. And lo and behold, they didn't for whatever reason. And so, uh, you know, I think I've sold one of them domestically, but they're really priced too high to go. Um, you know, anybody could just go to the guest website and buy them for 50 bucks. So uh, they're not going to buy them for me for a hundred, but this is where, you, you know, it really helps to be doing your own international shipping. Um, I think I've sold 10 of them total and eight of them have gone to Australia. All three of the ones I sold this week went to Australia. Um, there were two days in a row where I woke up to a morning, you know, to an overnight sale to Australia. I think it was almost, I was like, man, is this just going to happen every morning? I just going to wake up every morning to a hundred dollar sale to Australia. And then I send it simple export rate. So I make a few extra bucks. I don't have to pay for shipping and it's pretty awesome. So I have noticed that um, Australia is probably my number one country as far as vintage or not, this isn't vintage, this is retro, but uh, as far as streetwear goes, um, Australia they it's super popular there they'll pay for it uh you know so again if you are not doing your own international shipping you need to be you need to be let's do this you need to be you need to be 360 throwback awesome going to oregon bowling can't wait to meet you too well we are really excited to meet a lot of people i i'm betting that they're going to be most of the people there are people that we've never met before so i'm excited about that yeah for sure uh and I, I i don't think i've told my sister yet but we're making her go with us so i bought her ticket so she better be the oh guest, her. the guest tees were she paid 29.99 for those 29 uh, straight oh 29 dollars straight uh I, I did have to pay tax of course since i'm in nevada but um it wasn't too much extra well like eight percent whatever but um Picker Pam says, I've switched to direct to international. I've had a 10% increase. That's that is awesome. awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Very, very cool. Very cool. I'd love to see. Uh, yes, we're still doing the February. Well, okay. So the, we're doing the, the meetup in Portland, which is on the 23rd. But we get back the day of our regular meetup here in Vegas on yes. the 26th. So the we will, we will be back Our February 26th meetup, we will be doing, as usual, 6 o'clock, Nevada Blind Center. Same place, same bat channel as last last month. Yep. So and I will good. probably bring some water and cookies again. Uh, Leslie, I do take returns on items I sell internationally, but it's buyer paid returns because I'm not doing free returns for international items. And honestly, I've only ever had one return ever. And the buyer paid to return, it was a pair of shoes and they, they had made a mistake and thought they were gonna get a different size uh, or misread what the size was and they paid both ways. But generally you just don't get returns internationally. It happens very, very rarely. Yeah, um, I do the same as Katie. Again, I think I've, I've had maybe one return in a bazillion years. Yeah. International. Yeah, so I mean, Julie, all I'm saying is that Australia, you know, the, the buyers there, streetwear is very popular there, but they don't have the same access that we do. I'm assuming they don't have a guest store that they can walk into. A lot of the big companies won't won't ship internationally. Um, so you can, you know, a lot of stuff can sell. And plus their their thrift stores aren't gonna have like the cool vintage stuff as much as what we have. It's just not gonna be as uh readily available. Readily available. So they mm -hmm. have to pay it for it if they want to keep up with the trends. And I sell everything international. Mm -hmm. Katie only sells shoes and clothing, so um, but I sell everything international and I can't really say yeah. what's what sells. A little bit of everything sells. So yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, 20% of my sales are international, but and it's but mine's all closed. Okay. So this guy sold yesterday. I sent out offers to watchers. I had this listed. So this was mine. I actually had this. Um, I had purchased it as part of my Pink Panther collection. I actually have quite a few of the shag items and I'm not a big Pink Panther fan, but I bought this because I got it really cheaply and I knew that it was going to appreciate in value. So I paid about $25 for this um, a few years ago and I had it sitting on my uh on my bar and i you know i don't use it i'm never going to use it i'm not really into tiki um so i had these things with the napkins and all that kind of stuff so i sold it i sold it offers to watchers i listed it maybe a month ago and i sold it for 95 dollars yesterday mm -hmm. very very cool nice all right this one is an awesome sale Illinois College of Medicine sweatshirt. This is a vintage 90s sweatshirt. Um, this is Russell Athletic. Uh, if you'll notice that this has, let's see how the the um, the logo has the eagle head as part of the R. Uh, that tells you that it's vintage pretty much uh, up through the 90s. Uh, that was the way the logo is. The logo now, it's just a regular, it's red there, but it's not an eagle's head. 
Um, and it's made in the U.S., so it is uh, vintage '90s. These sell pretty well, regardless. Like, uh, and and the uh, uh, heather gray is like kind of a pop really popular color. Um, but this one, Illinois College of Medicine, just a random sweatshirt I found. I priced it really high because I'm like, you know what? There's going to be somebody who went to that school, and you know what? If they went to that school and they graduated, guess what? They're a doctor, and doctors make money. And so I just pressed it high and I was like, whatever, <laughs> you like that song? Uh, you know, it's just, but this is how I, my thought, this is my thought process when I list stuff sometimes. And so literally this was up for maybe a few days, maybe. So, and I got 70 bucks out of it. It really didn't last very long. It was only up for a couple of days. Um, so I was pretty stoked about that sale. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So this wasn't listed very long either. I had this listed for at what, um, a week maybe? week and a half. Um, I did take an offer on it. I sold it for $135. I paid $10 for it. I bought this when Robin and Jimmy were in town at Salvation Army. Um, and so I really had it listed for a week, maybe two. I'm glad you got both these pictures in because I could see there's a big difference in detail. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, jerk. You're welcome. Uh, oh, wait, wait. We really got to let's go ahead and make sure. Oh, we... apparently there were quite a few pictures uh, of the same thing. Okay. Hold on. It's like you really you wanted to do like a video. <laughs> You're an ass. You know, like stop motion. Why did I have so many pictures of the know. same thing? I, anyway. feel like, I feel like uh, Allison said something recently about duplicate, uh, like photos duplicating. Um, I don't know. I can't imagine that I did. Allison, if you're still in the chat. Let us know if, if that that's was something weird. you posted about. Um, anyway, so it looks like it's all scratch, but it's really not. That's why I showed the third picture. You can see that it's actually, that's the plastic that is yeah. still covering the silver part. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so it sold. It sold for $135. It did cost me $25 to ship because, of course, they purchased it on the East Coast. That's of the way course. it is. I always, put, and I shipped it FedEx Ground, um, but I always factor in shipping. Um, and again, that sold high. That sold for more than any of the others have sold in the last several months. Nice. So, all right, cool. Um, here's another one that I just decided this to uh, price high. Um, I think and you I showed, showed this. this you showed I did. This last I showed week. this last week, you guys. I showed it last week. It was up for maybe a couple of days. Again, this is not vintage. If you look at the um, the copyright info on it, it actually says 2017. Of course, the movie Aliens from 1979, but it's 2017. This is actually an H&M brand divided as an H&M brand. Um, but my kind of thought process was, you know what? They probably didn't have it in their stores for that long. And uh, and somebody who's like a crazy Alien fan, because I know I love Alien, and I was like, I can't sell this. I'm just going to keep it for myself. Uh, but it's such a cool sweatshirt. And I looked around. I didn't see any of them like, were currently available. So I listed it again, listed it pretty high for a used sweatshirt that's not vintage. And it sold within maybe a day or two for $70. Um, so seriously, guys, seriously, you don't be scared to price stuff up. I know, for, for an H&M sweatshirt. Now, again, I'm not talking about like just random crap that like there's a million things, uh, you know, copies or versions of out there. Right, right. It's like you got to have a certain thought process that goes into like, why are you pricing this up, you know? Um, so. 70 bucks, dude. You know, I don't know if it's glow in the dark. I didn't test it out. I didn't list it as glow in the dark. So um, if it is, then that's a bonus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the divided clothing brand is pretty comfortable too. Uh, so Sharon asked, do people, you, meaning us, I, I assume, mm -hmm. uh, use listing software and have you ever? Uh, neither one of us use listing software. We, we list directly to eBay. Um, I have in the past, I used to use Seller Sourcebook, which is a third party listing software, but I used that specifically for their fancy schmancy um, uh, templates that we used to use to make these sparkly backgrounds and pretty pictures in the back of listings. Those are discouraged and no longer used on eBay, so I no longer use their system. Yep. Uh, Allison says doctors and aliens have money. <laughs> oh, doctors and aliens have money. Yeah. Jen Lee says, I think I may actually price too high. You know, it's something you have to play around with. I think that what people should really focus on first uh, is really understanding what makes for a good listing before you even think about price. And that has to do with policy. So I've said this before, like the whole remove all obstacles. You know, I have free shipping. I have free returns. I ship worldwide with no exclusions. Um, I have all of I that have, except free returns. Yep. I have good pictures. I put my measurements in there. You'd be shocked how many people do not include measurements in clothing. It is insane. 
Um, so all the stuff kind of adds up to uh, making my product stand out more. And then I can start pricing stuff higher. Um, so I don't know. You just got to kind of play around with it. If you have stuff that's just sitting around forever, then maybe you are pricing it too high. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I no longer have um, free returns. And I went back back in November to charging for returns unless something is not as described. Mm -hmm. And now my returns are on a much nor more normal level where I get maybe one a week. Yep. Um, sometimes as many as two a week, which is normal for me for my volume. Um, before I was getting what 10 and 15 a week. It was, yeah. it was insane. And um, I don't have that problem. I ha I do get returns open, but another thing I've noticed about maybe it's just a dude thing. They open returns and then they just never send them. Um, so I'd say like half of the time, probably about 50% of the time when somebody opens a return, they don't send it. And then I go and have it closed out because they've missed the deadline. Yeah. Chris says, uh, doctors and aliens. It's a new movie coming out. I'm pretty nice. sure. I'm pretty sure it's the sequel to Cowboys and aliens. So I think it, it took them a <laughs> while to come to get that sequel out, but, uh, I hear it's yep. a good one. Yeah. For me, I mean, you're going to play around and see what works for you. For me, um, I did not see an increase in sales when I went to free returns. I only saw an in, a huge increase in returns. Um, and I have not seen a decrease in sales by taking off free returns. So again, you have to do what works for you. Mm -hmm. right. um, okay. So this, I actually took an offer and sold this for $300. I did show this on um, my Instagram in case anybody follows me on Instagram. Um, and it's, you know, I try to post on there occasional. I'm getting a little bit better. Um, I try to do one to two. I'm trying. I've been day. really so terrible bad. in the last uh, month or so. Um, I'm trying to get back on the horse. Um, so anyway, I sold this. I paid $10 for it. I picked it up when Victoria Smith was here sourcing with us back in October. So it actually, uh, it sold for $300. Um, it's just a really cool thing. Um, I always tell people, do not be afraid of something that you don't know anything about. If it's cool, if it looks cool, if it looks interesting, do a quick look up. Well, we had, we had gone to, um, the Nevada blind center for right after open for an event, um, with Chris Lynn. Mm -hmm. And when we were there, there was a woman who was sitting at one of the tables in like the main area. Yeah, and she, she was, was using, she one. was using one of these and I'd never seen one before. And mm -hmm. I was like, what is that thing? That is awesome. It was really, really cool to see her, her typing with it. And I swear it was, you know, it was like a few months later when you found this. Right. And I did not recall that it was the same thing. Yeah. But I was like, man, I'd never even seen something. Like, it's kind of one of those things where it's like that once you become aware of something, then you actually will see it. And you probably saw it before and just never noticed Or like it. when you buy a blue car and you're like, oh, nobody has this color. And then you see it everywhere. Yeah. It's one of those things. Anyway, I wish I found these everywhere now because now I know. And I held off for a few months. I've had a few lowball offers. I actually sold it on a best offer to someone for $175 when I was having a slow week, mm -hmm. one week, and thinking, eh, might as well just get rid of it because I didn't have much invested in it. And they never paid. Well, thank you for not paying. Um, and oh, Jean says it's called selective attention. Oh, interesting. What I was talking about. Interesting. So I, I love picking up different and unusual things that I've never heard of. Um, and that is how you learn about things. Like mm -hmm. you learn a little bit. Let's, I've said many, many times, I have a little bit of knowledge about a vast amount of things. Yeah. There's a so, certain amount of this business that's, that can be, uh, that's kind of about instinct and like just kind of having a good, and I think you and I both, both have this where just kind of a, a good instinct for what something is or if something might be valuable because it's just because it's interesting or different. Mm -hmm. Um, and some people have it, some people don't, and you can, you know, you can learn it to a certain degree, but yeah. And uh, David, this did come from savers. I paid about $10 for it. As I said, it's cracked in one corner, but that's just the casing. Um, it cost $30 to ship this. So I did ship this to New York as well. Again, I ship, I maybe 50% of my items are going to zone eight. Um, Allison says that's how you picked me up. Yeah, I didn't know anything about her, <laughs> and she was weird and strange. It's true. It's true. All right. Uh, okay. So here, here's the lesson part of the day. I've talked about this before, guys, and we've been talking about pricing and stuff like that. So this is a Prince T-shirt that is currently listed. This is not my listing. This is currently listed right now. It looks like it's in pretty good condition. Um, they have a price for thirty dollars and forty nine cents, and they're charging shipping on that five twenty four. Uh, and then you go here and you look, here's the same one. It just, it sold February 1st for $29 with $4.39 shipping. Uh, and then we go to this one. This one sold for $31, um, in January on their same dirty floor. Yeah. Uh, and then we look at this one. This one sold for $40, um, with 524 shipping. 
These are all the exact same t-shirt. Um, two of them, uh, I believe this one is extra large. This one's extra large. Now I had one that is extra large and this was listed for, I don't even think it was listed a week. Didn't I share? I shared it here, didn't I? Mm -hmm. I think I did share it here. Um, anyway, and I took an offer. I had somebody offer like 70, I think. And then I countered, they came back with 90. And then the last one that they offered was a hundred dollars. They said it's the most they wanted to pay. So I was like, you know what? hundred bucks for this t-shirt is a good deal. So I sold this t-shirt for a hundred dollars, you guys. And this wasn't like, oh, I'm going for the long haul and I'm going to wait for three months to get a good price. This was literally listed for less than a week. Did you go and buy all the other ones that were listed? for? No, there's only $30? one. There's one that's currently listed. I may or may not. Or maybe I'll let one of you guys get on that. Um, but seriously, I sold it for a hundred bucks in less than a week. And this is where you can't necessarily always trust the comps that you see, because I think a lot of people underprice stuff and they don't have uh, the cojones to actually true. price stuff up and, you know, hope that they're going to get a good deal. So I'm telling you guys, yeah, see, and I, I don't know, maybe it has to do with the fact that I have uh, free shipping. Maybe it's because I have free returns. Maybe it's because I don't know. I didn't sell it internationally, so it had nothing to do with that. But who knows, guys? I don't know. All right. So, um, DJ, Holy, I am scuzzled, but Lord of the Mountains, behold my Patrick Duffy leg. That's a great sale. <laughs> that's really funny. I don't even know what that's from, but that's funny. Uh, and there were also other ones that were printed on white that were the same graphic, but I decided to stick with just the black ones. Um, and the white ones were selling for, I think the most they were selling for was like 50 bucks. Um, so DJ wants to know, does anyone know how to add shipping discount? I tried adding it where it says each additional sold for three, uh, yeah, I'm not, I, I don't know. I don't think I have, since I do free I shipping, I don't do that. So same, I, I do free shipping. Yeah. Yeah. And also it's a, maybe it's, somebody in the chat can answer that for you, DJ. Yeah. I think some people don't know what they have, but I also think some people just, they, they want to sell something quick and they're just scared to, to charge a lot. They think that they'll get stuck with it. Um, and I just don't think that's the case a, a lot of times. All right. Next for you, you get a little Etsy sale here. Yeah, little Etsy sale. Um, can you please tell me what I sold it for? I don't yeah. Know. Again, this is one of those, I didn't necessarily know what it is. Clearly the dude is like the picture on the front. It's from the 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, it was new in the box. I'm not sure if I got this at Savers or a garage sale. I'm not sure which, but I know I paid no less, no more than $5 for it. It's pretty awesome. All right, so we're going to go over to flippertools.com and we're going to check out and see. Again, the guys, this is a free site you can use. Um, to see what something sold for if you're trying to do some research. $79.95. $79.95 plus I did charge shipping. I charged $15 shipping. Um, nice. on, on Etsy, I do charge shipping on my hard goods um, for the most part. So that sold, again, I paid $5. I think I had it for six months. And that was listed on eBay as low as $30 or $40 at certain points for um, with yeah, free shipping. Cool. So, uh, you know, Etsy buyers and eBay buyers, again, they're two very different buyers. Mm -hmm. My buyers do not shop because every single thing I sell on Etsy is available in my eBay store cheaper. Yeah, Flipper Tools, um, Martha, it's just a website that you can use to check on what, what stuff has sold for and it's free. Um, Josh Newell, who actually created Fit Shipper as well. Uh, created this website. It's really nice if you need to uh, go and look at like the Etsy sold price. So that's one thing um, because Etsy used to show sold prices. I'm not sure why it's not anymore. Um, and then eBay, if you if you ever try to do research and you see that somebody um, sold something as the best offer, it doesn't tell you what the actual selling price was. So you can look at it here too. So it's pretty cool. And you don't have to pay for it. There's other ones out there that charge, uh, but this is totally free. So it's pretty cool. Sunny, I don't even know exactly what the item does. I know it has something to do it's a, with it's a router. Um, it's it has to do with like a router template. It's like it's not the whole tool. You can make signs it's, and nameplates. Yeah, and you can engrave stuff, which is probably really good for somebody who's crafty and does stuff and makes things on Etsy and all that kind of stuff. So they still make them, and they're very similar looking. That just happens to be a vintage one. So yeah. All right, and let's go on to this one. Hey guys, remember this? Remember this jacket? Um, I did take an offer on this, but this is that King of the Hill uh, jacket that I got. I think I paid, I paid less than five bucks for it because the zipper was broken and it was completely broken and it wasn't something I could just fix at home. And I remember showing it to somebody at the um, counter and so they were willing to go down in price. You can do that sometimes at Savers. So I paid like maybe four bucks for it. 
-hmm. I took it to the um, dry cleaners that we go to and they charged me $25 to put a whole new zipper in and they put a nice, a nice, nice. metal zipper in. Yeah. Um, and so I was in about $30 and uh, I think I had it listed for a few weeks and I took an offer. Somebody offered yesterday like 150 bucks and I was like, you know what? 150 bucks is a good deal. I wanted to get a good sale for the day. And so I took a $150 offer. So, Hey guys, sometimes you got to pay up. Sometimes you have to, you know, it's, if you find something like this that you think is really valuable, but you're not going to be able to sell it because the zipper is broken. Sometimes it's worth it to take it in and get that fixed. So don't be scared to, to do that. I know sometimes it's like, you don't want to buy a bunch of crap and be like, well, someday I'm going to fix that. And someday I'm going to fix that. Yeah, you definitely don't want to do that. But if it's something really worth it, get it taken care of and get it listed. And it took you a good month to get it off and yeah, because part Taking of it was because of I had to go and drop it off the dry cleaner. But it's like, it's not, I was doing other stuff at the same time. So it was fine. We got it done. All right. Next one for you. Oh, this Cara, one. Cara looked up, uh, what is a pantograph is for copying a, a drawing or plan on a different scale by a system of hinged and jointed rods. Well, thank you for looking that up for us. <laughs> See, I don't even have to know what the hell it is to sell it. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, so this is actually a really good sale. I sold this yesterday. It's going to be shipped out tomorrow. I sold it on Etsy. Um, I did charge for shipping. It's not even in good shape. Can I just look at how dirty it is? Look at how dirty this is. It is a filthy suede jacket. It says that it's dirty. It's yeah, got I think black you put it down here. It. You say it's structurally it's in good shape, but the suede on both sleeves and the red and yellow areas is pretty dirty. And then it needs to be cleaned professionally. So you're pretty upfront, and yeah, it's it's dirty. Look at that. It's dirty. It's a nice jacket. I paid $10 for it. And the only reason I paid $10 for it is because it was filthy and it was at um, a Goodwill. And I'm pretty sure it was like a 50% off day. I had it listed for a long time. Let's um, see what it sold for, huh? Yeah. What do you, you think it sold for? Ready? Bam. $140. And I shipped it. I, I charged $15 shipping. Yeah. Because it's heavy. It's probably a good four to five pounds because it's that big, heavy suede. That's not so uh, I think it's a great sale, especially the condition it's in. A lot of people wouldn't have even picked it up. I don't think Katie would have picked it up because that's how dirty it was. Mm -hmm. uh, John, can you ship shoes international first class and priority boxes and equipment poly bags? Don't do it. You don't want to be using uh, priority boxes um, for anything that's not priority. Uh, it's misuse of, pri of you know post office supplies. And that's part of the reason why, you know, costs get go up every year because they lose money on stuff like that. And we just don't want to get involved in it. And at the same time, uh, when you're shipping internationally, there's always a chance anywhere along the way that they could they could be inspecting that stuff. It gets inspected at customs. You never know. Um, and then it either comes back to you or it goes to the buyer with postage due. Yeah. So just just don't do it. You never want to use priority uh, supplies for anything that's not going priority. All right. So. So we already have one prize going because right. we've, we've hit 91 thumbs up. We have almost 200 people watching live. If you can get us to 100 watching, uh, 100 thumbs up, then, you know, that's not even, it's only half of you guys, 100 thumbs up and we will give do two giveaways. Mm -hmm. We'll do one right after in, in a couple of minutes because we're almost done with this part. And then we will do one toward the end of the show. All right. So anyone wants to know how many days do you rotate items in and out? Do you rotate the dead stock out and then relist in two months? Um, we both have the philosophy of not wanting to have stuff that's over 90 days old. Now, I will say I'm behind. I haven't been doing as well at ending stuff and relisting it. So I actually do have stuff that's much older than 90 days. Vicky has been doing much better. You have what oldest is like two months? No, no, no. My oldest is actually four or five months. Oh, okay. So you want it, but you would, you want to be, you strive for the whole 90 day yes. thing as well. Yes. I so. strive to keep every, and I don't end the listings. I don't um, rotate the stuff out. What I do is I will end the listings. I will rework title or pricing or maybe change up a couple of pictures. Um, sometimes stuff is really old. I mean, I have stuff that's over a year old. I have stuff that's probably two years old in my store um, and it all sells eventually. Yep. Um, I well, actually pulled about five items today that haven't sold in a long time. They're all over a year old and they were like big, huge, taking up a lot of space yeah. crap that I didn't spend any money on. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. Now, ideally you would not have stuff that's sitting around for a year. No, ideally no, but we do price up it a happens. little higher. And especially when you have like an inventory of thousands of items, it's really easy to, uh, to not be paying as much attention to that stuff and end up having something around for two years. Ideally you wouldn't, it's not the best thing. But it happens. And so, like, for instance, this jacket right here, this is my last one to show you guys. 
Um, it's a really nice leather bomber jacket. It is a really nice jacket. But let me tell you guys, based on where I pulled this off of my rack, it was all the way to the end, which means it came with me from Oregon over a year ago. And it was it's one of my older items. And it finally sold. It was on um, it was on sale on eBay for like $104. Let me show you what I sold it for on Etsy. $150. So I, ra I would rather it had sold a lot sooner. Um, I'm not going to say like I'm ha necessarily happy that I was basically letting it sit in my inventory for a year and a half or however long it was. Um, but I sold it for $150 on Etsy. It's my best sale this week on Etsy. Um, and it's just a really cool bomber jacket. Yeah, um, Sunny, you're absolutely right. If you delist the old and then you sell similar, not relist, delist it and then sell similar, do a little tweaking because if it hasn't sold, you probably need to tweak it for some reason, whether it's mm -hmm. check, changing out your photos, changing the arrangement of the photos, maybe changing some words in your title, uh, changing your pricing, that type of thing. So when you delist or unlist something or end the listing, always use sell similar. Do not use relist. Using sell similar will create a new item number, which uh, boosts its rank rank in mm -hmm. search again um that's the one downside to using uh, good till canceled i like to use good till canceled because with thousands of listings i don't want to be relisting a hundred items every day or a couple hundred items every day every day that's a pain in the neck but um when you have a smaller store i understand not everybody has that issue yeah but the good thing about using good till canceled is you can go in at your leisure and end the older listings and rework mm -hmm. them in that way yeah. so anything over 90 days is definitely stale in, in eBay's eyes and the listings are suppressed when they're over 90 days old. Um, you're still going to sell stuff occasionally here and there that someone's going to look through. It's just not going to be in the first few pages or the first page or two. Yeah. So understand that the older that your listings are, the less likely that they are going to sell. Yeah. So uh, speaking of, we are going to have next Wednesday, we're going to be having uh, Brooks on uh, from Datamine and Teresa to talk about Datamine. And one of the features that they that they have been working on, and it, it's been I think it's been active for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, I think you, you you've used it a little bit. I know Teresa uses it all the time, but they have. I've tried it once actually. I, okay. I, I, I'm really bad. This is why I need to have. I'm excited. She's not a techie person here. at all. I'm not. But anyway, there. I think they'll be. Uh, Brooks will be demonstrating this on Wednesday show, so you should totally check it out. But one of the features that Datamine has is um, an auto delist and relist feature, and so you can set it up under certain parameters. And I'll we'll have like every show. eighty nine days. Yeah, when like, a sale is eight, uh, when an item is eighty nine days old, you can have it delist and then relist it. Yeah, so you don't end stuff. up paying for extra listings or anything like that. So that's one really cool feature. Um, and eventually I would like to use it. I, my, my issue is just that I have older listings that still need to be reworked as far as their titles and stuff like that go. So anyway, all right, guys. Um, there were a couple of questions up here. So, uh, Keelan Kisses, the, the Cure leather jacket. I've got a couple of watchers on that. I haven't gotten any offers yet. I Picker. tend to not get a lot of watchers. I have fewer than five watchers on probably 2,000 of my mm. items. Yeah, I get a lot of watchers on mine. Um, key Lime Kisses. Oh, no, that was already answered that question. Picker Pam, should I include a packing slip on international? This one over here will say yes. I will say yes. International for a couple of reasons. Um, part of that is you cannot always read your label, uh, depending whether it's, a, it's, it's taped on or it's a a thermal label they can't always read the information on it so a lot of times packages are going to be opened at customs to get pricing because that's going to determine the type of fees and import fees that uh, your customer is going to pay in, in in various countries so when you have a packing slip in there it clearly shows the the customs office what the item is and what they paid for yeah. it whether it's new whether it's used that type of thing so you're going to want to do that for your buyer's protection or your buyer and, and your for your buyer's help um, the other reason why is if you have a package that gets lost and a label falls off or the package gets mangled, if you have a packing slip, you are much more likely that it's going to get to the intended recipient or get back, returned back to you. Yeah. Um, I don't, not everybody uses them for domestic shipments. Katie never uses them. I happen to use them for everything and I'm not going to say one way or the yeah. other whether you should do that. I only do that because that's how I pull my inventory data. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't, I don't use packing slips ever. I don't use them for international, and I'm not saying it's a. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying that I never do, and it has to do with to, to include them. I hate getting a piece of paper with it, 
So I just don't, and I take that risk. And so far, it's never been a problem. So they, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, if, if if you feel like you should be doing that, go ahead and do it. If you miss one, if some you forget to do one, don't panic. Um, it's probably going to be fine. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, it's probably better business practice to include it. Um, real quick. But hey, Kelly, we've got a question there, Sharon. I know it's been answered before. What is a good cross listing package for Etsy? There is no cross listing tool that exists for Etsy as of yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a okay first of all dorothy makes a good point it's it's actually called delist sell similar feature on um data mine because they delist it and then they use sell similar correct it's automated uh and then real quick it's not totally automated but it's yeah so so cornery fox uh chris says watchers aren't buyers somewhat true however however real quick we've been using we've had access to the offers to watchers uh tool for the past, since December, sometime in December, November, mm -hmm. December. Four or five months. Um, they are rolling it out. Supposedly more of you guys should be getting access to that feature. So um, definitely check, you may have it, you might not have looked. But when we're talking about watchers not being buyers, what happened to you yesterday? Oh yeah, so yesterday, I do have the Offers to Watchers feature. And if you're wondering what that is, um, search through some of our previous videos because we did talk about it. And we also talked about the workaround if you do not have the option uh, in detail with screen sharing. So look through some of the previous videos and that'll uh, it search Offers to Watchers, you will, you will find it. Um, I actually went through and spent a few hours. I tend to do it um, on the weekends. I'll send out some offers to watchers. And I, I, I spent a few hours doing it yesterday. I sent out several hundred. And I actually had 22 sales yesterday, and 18 of them were from offers to watchers. 18 sales. From, I've never had that kind of response. No, I've always I had, like, I get like, I, hand, I get maybe one or two. Yeah, because I did, I did, uh, I always forget to do it. And maybe once a week, I'll remember to do some. And the last time I did some, I did maybe 30, 40, and I got one sale out of it. Mm -hmm. um, but seriously, 18 sales from offers to watchers. So that is totally crazy, totally crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but no, but Chris, I completely agree with you that there are definitely, like I've watched stuff all the time that I have yeah. no intention of buying. Exactly. Because I want to see if it's something maybe that I have, and I want to see if somebody else sells it for whatever price. I will definitely watch stuff with no intention to buy. So I totally agree with you. I agree with you, DJ. Some watchers are sellers who have similar items. I think some watchers are, uh, as far as for Katie and I might be, you guys might be some people in our audience watching. Well, I've had people say about. like, hey, you sent that offer out. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. So, I, so, you know, that definitely happens. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. So why don't And we... I agree with you, Kara. I wish the offers to watchers, you could tell where your, where your watcher was. And that would depend where, you know, on your pricing. We can't but see any of that information. You can't tell and you're not going to get any of that information. So, yeah. You don't know. All it tells you yep. is. Sometimes I have 10 watchers on something and it'll say your offer to watchers being sent to five people. I don't know which five. I don't know why it's only five and not 10. I don't yeah. really understand how that works yet. You also don't know if any of those five people have within the last 30 days clicked on your, your promoted listing sponsored uh, listing. Because mm -hmm. if that item that you send an offer to watchers on, if they clicked on it within the last 30 days and then they go ahead and buy it, you're paying that promoted listing fee on top yeah, of everything so else. So Justin, I think Katie just answered your question. Yes. Because that's the way the way that promoted listings work is if somebody clicks on your uh, sponsored listing and then at any point in the next 30 days, they go back and purchase it. And so that could be because you sent them an offer. Um, you're going to have to pay that uh, that fee. Right. So. Okay, so let's get into our haul. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, do sorry. I, do, do I, do I made a promise. Let's, I do made a a promise. Let's, do, let's do one of our giveaways uh, now, and then we'll do the other All right, one at the so end. So we're going to do this real quick. I'm going to, well, since we can't send this one. What is in here? I have no idea. All right. I am going to just write it on the, this. choose a, no, don't yet, don't guess yet. Don't you start. We're not looking. We don't care. We'll say when. Uh, I'm going to choose a number since we had to get to 75. I'm going to choose a number between 1 and 75. And I am going to start that now. 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 And it'll take a couple seconds. 1 through 75. And again, it's the, it's the first person that we see that has the right number. Um, mm -hmm. 
So it, it might come up in a different order on your screen, guys. So please don't be crybaby pee pee pants if you uh, think you should have won and you didn't. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see if who's got it. I'm not seeing it yet. First two were real close. Yeah, come on, guys. Come on. Real close. Maybe one to 75 is too many. I don't think so. I think uh, Will Armstrong G7, really? <laughs> oh, now it's going too fast. Yeah, I still haven't seen Holy it. Holy cannoli, guys. Come on. Oh, oh, I see it. Mary Lucas. Woohoo! Woohoo! Mary Lucas, what's up? Mary Lucas, the number is 53. 53. Awesome. Mary, send me a message through Facebook and give me your mailing address, please. And we will be sending you out a little gift, which is really good because I think Mary needs a little pick me up. She's had a rough week. Rough couple her, weeks. Yeah, a couple weeks. Her hubby has been was real sick and was in the hospital for a while and it was a little scary. And but he's home now, he's so home. that's good. So but yeah, for yay. sure. All right, awesome. Congratulations. Uh, we will do the second giveaway uh, at the end of the show, but now we're going to do our haul. And we got some really cool stuff this week. We did. So we actually didn't source together at all. Well, we no. sort we sort of kind of did, but not really. Um, I you know I went on my normal all day Thursday loop of all the savers and Buffalo Exchange, but first at the beginning of the day I met up with Barry uh, Afro Vintage on Instagram and uh did a little bulk buy Barry's like her own little private sourcing dude at this point i think yeah for sure but then he had some more stuff that he scored um after thursday and so he actually came by our house was it yesterday yesterday and so uh, we both got to do basically we were like picking out of his car we were like what do you got here what do you got here what do you got here what's this what's this i, I know we went stuff. through all of his stuffs he went through all we went through all of his stuff so otherwise she went to an Grandma, estate she, sale. She, she went by herself because i was home in a crappy mood and listing all day yeah. i have fun when we're together but when when i go by myself i can go super fast um like i was home two hours earlier than i was the, we were the week before who and I went to an Wait extra minute, store. I'm, reading, I'm reading here. People said I got blocked. I got blocked. I don't know what that means. eBay chat life. Too many texts put one in a penalty. I don't know what that means. No idea. I don't know. We didn't block anyone. I swear. We don't. Do, we didn't do anything. Um. Interesting. Um. Uh. We've gone to the flea market here. There's the Broad Acres um, swap meet. We've gone a couple of times and usually it's, we just don't go all the time, but when we do go, I usually find some cool stuff. So, um, Oh, you oh, weird throttles. It says you, too many, you've typed too many responses. And oh, you're probably, done. cause you're probably going crazy. Like seven, one, so many, 25, so many, 33, try, 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 oh, try to win. Try to win. YouTube says take a break. <laughs> you were too hyper with your responses. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Keelan says you can't comment too many times when they slow your roll. Probably a good thing. Probably a good thing. I guess that makes sense because um, it's they're trying to block well, yeah. people from trolling and spamming trolling and stuff. stuff like that. Yeah. So anyway, so you want to go first? All right. I'll go first. Okay, go for it. All right. So I'm going to do a little bit of clothing first because that's the part that um, Katie's going to end with, all clothing. So this is my one happy thing. So those of you that have uh, been watching us for a while uh, may or may not know that I really, really, I have a thing for um, vintage you know, hard rock cafe stuff. I don't really know why. I just like it. I like to buy mm -hmm. it. I like to sell it. Um, I don't wear it. Um, but I like it when it's vintage, especially. And uh, if it's something good and I tend to sell everything and I, and I'll price it higher than most people do. And I'll still, I'll still uh, sell it. So Katie found me a shirt at, um, this was my this Buffalo was, exchange. This was because I went by myself and she was having unrelated. She was just having a real crappy day on Thursday and was real grumpy. I was pants. grumpy. And so I picked up something, something up for her that was to make her feel a little bit better because she had a bad day mm -hmm. and didn't get to go sourcing with me. So yeah, Jen, I think we're going to do a quiz at the end of the show. Sometimes we we'll do that. Yeah. Away. Okay. So look how cool this is guys. Right? So right now tie dye retro tie dye is real hot. Um, this is not retro. This is vintage. This is eighties vintage made in the USA. And single it's stitch y'all single stitch. And it's Hard Rock Cafe Tokyo. Um, I think it's awesome. And it's a good size. I think it's a large or an extra large. It's got a single single stitch. I don't know if you can see that. It's extra large. 
and it's really crispy. It's not new. Um, and actually needs to be washed because it does have a little bit of schmutz on one sleeve. It could be new. I don't know. It actually could be because it is real crispy, but I'm not selling it as new. Anyway, I'm going to list it as it's extra large, Sunny. I think I listed it already. How much did you list it for? I paid a whole $15 for this t shirt, you guys. I, I think I for... listed it for $50 or $60. I'm not sure. All right. I, I got it at Buffalo Exchange, so their prices are a little bit higher, but it was such a cool shirt that I was like, you know what? She can sell it. I think I Make listed it already. already. I have to double check. I may or may not have it listed already, but yeah. She doesn't remember. I can't remember. I, I it's all a blur. I listed a crap ton <laughs> this week. So, and I, sometimes I have stuff listed already when I bring it up here if I get it during the week, and then sometimes I don't. Um, Sandra, do you date those by the tag? Just because it was. Um, yeah, that tag's a 90s tag. So, a, yes. Yeah, it's a, it's an 80s to 90s tag, this particular one. And then that tag is 90s. It's made in the USA, yes. so you know it's vintage when it's made in the USA. Yeah. Almost always. So, that's one thing. Um, this is something I picked up at Savers, um, and this I picked up like a week and a half ago. I just didn't show it last week. Kara says you can send it to her and she'll wash it. Kara, <laughs> uh, Kara oh, likes the the tie dye. I forgot about mm -hmm. that. Yep, she's our little hippie chick. Um, so this is just a brand to bring to your attention when you're looking at luggage and backpacks and certain brands. This is a brand. It's called Herschel. It's that's what the logo looks like. So I only paid a couple of bucks for this backpack and it's not in great shape. I did wash it, but it's real stained in the front Yeah, and it's got a little hole in the corner. Now, that being said, the rest of the bag is in great shape. Mm -hmm. Herschel bags, if you take a look at these, Herschel sells for real big money. Um, I'm probably gonna list this for like 40 to 50 bucks because of the condition, it's still a good price. Um, Crazy. But if it were in better shape, this would be like, a real lot. This would be probably like a hundred dollars. A real backpack. lot? Is that like an official number? Yes. It'd be a real lot, guys. Yeah. I Tara, didn't... it's an extra large, the t-shirt. Um, a real lot. A real lot. So I picked these up yesterday at Goodwill. I went to the 50% off sale, which I generally don't do, but I'd gone to an estate sale that was around the corner and uh, I was there before it was open. So I was like, ah, I'll go. But I only paid $7.50. These nice little Dock shoes, deck shoes, boat shoes, whatever you want to call them, moccasins. But mm -hmm. they're fry. So Very they're cool. great quality. They're in excellent condition. Are they um, new? They, or? They, they're not new, but Very, they're darn well. close to new. Like yeah. maybe somebody wore them once. Mm -hmm. And these were $7.50. Kara, message me after the show and we'll we'll talk. Uh DJ, no idea. We'd have to see the T-shirt to be able to give you an idea. So send, if you want, you can send send an email to um, Vicky's email address. And yeah, so we'll these say. I'm probably going to sell these for about seventy five bucks. I paid seven fifty for them. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, yeah, there are there are good brands that sell Jennifer uh, Buckeye Mom that sell real well, even though they're. Um, you know, they don't look that great. I only grabbed it because of the brand Herschel, and I was mm -hmm. hoping I could get the stains out. I did treat it. I did wash it. They didn't come out. Yeah, Jen, so. uh, Vicky said the same thing that, you know, but she didn't even know that they made fry shoes, just boots. So, yeah. That's fine. So, and, and, and excellent quality, like like uh, Frenchie says. Yeah. Do I get to go? Uh, yeah, you did three. I'm going to do one more. I didn't do any. Wait, wait, I did three. I'm going to do one more. So, this any. one, this one's actually already been sold. Oh, Carrie does Sun and Moons too. Okay. All right. She needs that shirt. Mm -hmm. So, I picked this up for, I picked this up last week for about $5. This is a vintage purse with seashells. This is so vintage kitsch. It has lucite handles and a lucite clasp along the top. This is a very vintage 60s kitsch. This goes for the whole tiki crowd, pinup, that whole kind of thing. Um, actually, Robin bought this from me um, or has pledged to buy this from me. I will sell it to her next time I see her. I was going to list it for about $100, um, but I sold it to my friend for friend and family discount for $65. Very nice. Very um, nice. I love her dearly. I can't give away everything good that I find, though. So, <laughs> uh, Sophia purse. Yes, it does look like a Sophia purse. Sophia from Golden Girls. Um, so that was pretty cool. I like that bag. Um, John, I'm sure there are items that sell better internationally than others, but I just know from my own experience of selling a lot of streetwear and a lot of vintage streetwear, it does really well. And a lot of that just has to do with the fact that uh, vintage streetwear is super, super popular right now. 
and other countries just are not going to have the access to it uh, that we have here. You know, kids, younger kids here that are into it, they can just go shop at thrift stores and hope they find cool stuff. They don't necessarily have to buy it online. Um, whereas when you're in another country, they may not have either. They don't have thrift stores. If they do have them, they're just not going to have the uh, same amount of stuff. Jimmy says, all. thanks for letting me know. Sorry, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> I sent her a picture of it last week and she's like, oh my God, I need to buy that. Yeah. So I said, I'll just hold on to it the next time you come and visit and uh, mm. you can have it then. But yeah. So nice. now can I go? Yeah. Now you can go. <laughs> French says that French says that's a Frenchie bag. All right. So uh, like I said, I did do all the savers and I got um, two different uh, groups of things from uh, Barry, which is super awesome because Barry's a local uh, reseller and he just doesn't really like to do, you know, he's got like maybe 25 things in his eBay store. He doesn't like to have to go home and sit down and spend all the time taking pictures and listing and stuff like that. So he would much rather be out thrifting, sourcing, going to swap meets. In fact, I think today he's at um, Broad Acres. I Again. Saw yeah, I saw, no, selling. Oh. I saw a post. He had like a table of vintage t-shirts that be selling for five bucks a piece. Um, so he would rather sell locally. I know that he'll go and buy a bunch of stuff and he'll make the rounds of different um, uh, vintage shops and see to see if he can sell stuff. Um, and now he's selling stuff to moi. Um, so it's pretty awesome because I can pay him fair prices. I you generally pay what he asks for. And um, then I can turn around and make some real cash on it. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I went to Buffalo Exchange. I also traded a bunch of stuff at Buffalo Exchange. I talked about that on the last show. So I'm going to be doing that every week as well. So that's really cool. But let's just get into it. I got a lot of Let's just get into let's it. Let's just get into it. I got a lot. Yeah, 10 minutes later, let's just get into it. <laughs> uh, let's just hop right in. I did get a lot of t shirts this week, guys. I got to say, uh, not a lot of jackets, but um, this is a Sabres find. I think I, went, I found this at a Sabres where I only got a couple of things, but I was super stoked. Front is blank, but the back, look at that. Bam! Bam! I think Allison will appreciate this. Yep. Brian Head Neon Ski Resort. Ski. It's kind of a neon. Brian Head Utah. Look at that. I love this kind of stuff. I love it. It's such an awesome graphic. Uh, this stuff is a little bit more like late 80s, early 90s. Um, I love this style of t-shirts. I love finding these. Um, totally. I'll show you the, the tag here. Collegiate Pacific is the tag. Never seen. I think I've seen that brand a couple of times. But that's definitely vintage, single stitch. Super, super cool. It's only paid like a couple bucks for this one. But yeah, awesome colors. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, this one is one of the t-shirts I got at Buffalo Exchange. I ended up getting like $225 in credit for the stuff I brought in. I didn't I didn't get less than uh, $5 for anything. And, uh, and I still have like $76 left to spend next time I go in. Plus, I got a bunch of stuff already put together to take them. But this is one of the t-shirts I got. I love like these military plane ones. And this particular one is, I don't know how to pronounce it. Do you know? Tonopah. Tonopah. Is that what it is? Tonopah Test Range, Nevada. And it's oh, like Tonopah is a town. Okay. I still, that doesn't change how I I'll, pronounce I'm just saying, it. I, it's just, <laughs> you're like, well, Tonopah is a town. Still, I still can't. Yes, because that's, that's what I look like. <laughs> Stealth Fighter Nighthawk. I love this stuff. Somebody had asked in the chat and then we got carried away with something else about like the puffy stuff. This actually uh, has that. If you look real close, you can see, I don't know if it'll focus on it. Um, it's like that puffy stuff. Do you know what this is called? Does this have like a name? Puffy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> puffy stuff. Anyway, guys, I love this. I love this t-shirt. Pretty cool. So, you know, again, Buffalo Exchange, you're going to pay up for stuff. Uh, if it's on sale, you might get, you know, 25 to 50% off. But a lot of their T-shirts are priced anywhere from like 10 to 15 to 20 bucks for a T-shirt. But because I'm trading stuff in, I'm buying stuff that I know they'll take at Savers. And I'm trading it in and getting more money back. So the way I see it, it's like I'm getting a discount. So I don't know exactly how much I paid for this one, but I love it. Um, puffy paint. Yeah, maybe, Pam. But it's not really puffy it's not paint. paint. It's like it's just puffy. It, yeah, I don't know how. Like I don't know how they put it on there. This is an awesome vintage T-shirt. This is like '80s, maybe late '70s. Um, but look at that tag. It's really definitely uh, '70s or '80s. This is Bartlett Trucking T-shirt. And look at that. I love that graphic. I think this is super cool. It's just a really nice um, vintage T-shirt. I'll definitely be able to sell this. Now, these ones I'm getting from Buffalo Exchange, I'm gonna have to like price them up a little bit. But I think I can sell this for like 35 bucks on Etsy if it doesn't go on eBay. Love me some t-shirts. Now this one, got this at Buffalo Exchange. 
this one had a little sale thing, so it was sitting there for a while. So I got this one for like seven bucks. Mm -hmm. And but I love it. It's an indoor soccer miracle sports complex champions. Uh, so it's a super cool soccer T-shirt, and it's got the really old, the really old uh, Hanes tag. So this is probably like early, early '80s. I don't know if this is. I'd have to look and see what the '70s tag looks like, but this is definitely like at least early '80s. Um, but nice, thin, soft material, single stitch. So yeah, I think I only paid like seven bucks for this, but again, I can probably get like thirty-five out of it. Love it. Uh, nice, nice. Well, that the it's not the name Jim is not like Jim's name. That's the name of the company, I think, or maybe it is Jim Bartlett. Anyway, no, yeah, I, it's Bartlett Trucking is the name of the company. Okay, so maybe even with the name Jim, actually, that's totally fine because Jim is a is a very um, basic name. Anytime you find like vintage stuff like this, like jackets or whatever, if it has like John, Bruce, Jim, Bill, Joe, yeah, normal stuff, Mike, people people buy that stuff up. Doesn't in no way does it bring it down. Now, if it's a men's jacket and it has like Alice uh, embroidered on it, that's kind of a bummer. So, anyway, um, okay, I'll show you one last one that I got at uh, Buffalo Exchange. This one, Ocean Pacific, guys. Where who sells that? Target, Walmart, Walmart, Walmart sells the Ocean Pacific. It's one of those brands that back in the day it uh, was a super cool brand, and then it eventually got sold to Walmart. Mwah, mwah, mwah. And but if you can find the vintage stuff, it's still super super cool. This is a single stitch tie dye. Look at that huge graphic on the back. This is Ocean Pacific old school guys. This is probably 90s, mm -hmm. early early 90s. Oh, I'd say 90s because of this whole stripey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So early yeah. mid 90s ombre tie dye yep. thing. But uh, Ocean Pacific totally sells if it's vintage. Um, don't be scared because it gets sold at Walmart. Yeah, make sure you put vintage. Make sure you know it's vintage. Learn, learn oh, yeah, the difference yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean, yeah, the Ocean Pacific at Walmart is not selling single stitch. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's it for now. Okay, okay, go ahead. Uh, let's see what else I got. What you got? What you got, lady? I'm gonna do three. Get your clothing out Four. of the way, and then yeah. you can get. All right, guys, she's going to bust out some more clothing here, and then Four she's going to get to the hard goods, because last week, I know some of you were bummed that you didn't get to see any hard goods. She's got some good hard goods, guys. I'm telling you, it's coming. It's good. It's <laughs> shut up. It's stuff that goes for hundreds of dollars, so I'm telling you, you want to know it. You want to see it, but what do you got now? Not the clothing. I know, <laughs> not the clothing, whatever. All right, so I picked this up at Buffalo Exchange last week. Just thought this was oh, that's super, amazing. super cool. Like, it's just like this really cool track jacket type thing. It's a windbreaker. It's fleece and uh, and like windbreaker material. So East West Clothing is the brand. This is definitely very 90s. It is made in Hong Kong. Um, I think I paid $10 for it. And I'll definitely sell this for like 50, 60. Bucks. Now, is that brand anything or is it just really the, the well, the actually, it, like. it is a really good brand. If you find East West clothing and it happens to oh, be yeah. leather, leather East West clothing is fan friggin' tabulous. Leather East West pants or jackets are going to sell in the hundreds. If anybody watched the TV series Girl Boss or knew anything about the girl that created Girl Boss, when she, you know, if you've been on eBay long enough, mm. you understand that she really did start by selling and flipping That's funny. a Jen Girl Boss jacket. Boss for uh for like a thousand dollars or something that's like crazy. that so that is a true story that's how she started in the business um but yeah so it is the same east west company as girl boss but it does not sell as well unless it's leather it's their leather stuff that's different colors and textures and painted sometimes so uh sunny says that that would look great i mean i think it would bring it probably brings out the blue in my eyes what do you guys think yeah <laughs> no but it is women's, so she would never wear it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like 50, 60 bucks. It's not going to sell for a bazillion dollars, but I like it. It's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. Um, it, it, to me, it's like it's not always about like, does, is it going to sell for over $100? Also, I like getting certain things just because I think they're super cool. And I think they bring a level of coolness to like my store, especially for me, because I sell um, in a niche market. Uh, I want to always have like all kinds of really cool stuff coming in and out of my mm -hmm. store at all times. So people coming back will, will see it. So, so I also picked this up yesterday at Goodwill, uh, 50% off. Speaking of corduroy. I know. Speaking of corduroy, I paid $5. So it's 50% off of $10, but it's just a vintage Western blazer with the suede elbow patches. But, but, but look, it's Kenny Rogers. 
Kenny Rogers vintage Western wear. Oh yeah. So I'll probably sell this for about 60, 50, 60 bucks. It's very soft, nice. Very soft. nice. It's very, uh, this is very late seventies, early eighties. Um, I think it's made in the USA. I did not islands look at the tag. The that is what we Definitely are. islands in the stream era. Um, <laughs> and then you look at the, uh, leather buttons, leather buttons are a mm -hmm. good seventies giveaway. Very nice. Very nice. Grandma All says, right. grandma says she just sold one, uh, a Wrangler one. Oh, cool. I've got two more clothing items. This I actually hold on, bought. hold on. I need people to sit down. If you're not seated right now, you need to be sitting down because this is so patriotic. It's going to blow your mind. They should be seated, sitting. They should be oh, standing. Sorry. You should be standing up. You need to be saluting. Okay, put your hand over your heart, guys. Here we go. Stand at attention. Bam. That's America. 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 F yeah. All right. Okay, so. that was inappropriate. <laughs> that was disrespectful. Go ahead. Uh, so yeah, so it's this cool leather jacket. It's uh, made in Italy. It's vintage, definitely eighties, nineties. It's has. It. Look at how cool this is. It's so evil Knievel looking. <laughs> um. Anyway, so I paid twenty bucks for it. I bought this from Barry. I'm gonna probably sell it for about a hundred. I wish I could sell it for more. This particular brand may not it's be what awesome. sells it, but it's a small. If it were a little bigger, I think it could yeah, go for more. That eagle one's pretty great. Which, speaking of, I actually got uh, one of the things I got for. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Where is it? Where is it? I know. Made in Italy, America. I know. Made in Italy. Nice Italian leather jacket, but it's America. America. Continue. Um, okay. One other thing I picked up from Barry. I think I paid $10 for this one, and it. I probably overpaid a little bit because of nostalgia. I actually love this jacket. Uh, this is a vintage. We talk about Letterman's jackets and things like that. Well, this is somewhat of a wool Letterman style jacket. It's just super tiny and it's a woman's. So I would have paid up a little bit more for this had it been not a women's jacket, but look at how cool this is. It's wool, 80s. It actually looks a lot older than 80s, but I'm going to go with 87. It's not probably from the 80s, and it's probably not a number. Um, yeah, it's usually the year that's on there. But yeah, it, it might be the year they graduated. It might be a couple of years older than that. But anyway, it's this really cool. I it's love not it. black and orange. It looks like it in this color. It's actually a dark green, mm -hmm. like a hunter green and orange. Yeah. Um, and it belonged to Lisa, whoever lisa yeah, is. you're gonna be doing some sweater shaving on that yeah i just think it's just a really really cool jacket like i was a cheerleader in the 80s and my jackets don't look like this i still have them mine are the satin bombers um but i'm gonna sell this and i mean i'll probably sell it for 65 75 bucks i definitely think this is an etsy um an etsy seller i don't know that it will sell on ebay but i think the, the right person on etsy i can picture this on a little teeny tiny skinny girl mm -hmm. i don't know i think it's really cool i think it's pretty cool i just wanted so i was just digging around because i have my, my bag back here that's all the stuff that i'm going to be taking to uh, buffalo exchange this next week and so like i pick stuff up at savers that uh i have you know pay a couple bucks for and then i can flip it look at how amazing this is you guys america <laughs> sleeveless t-shirt <laughs> with a mullet with a mullet Eagle. The eagle has a mullet. Like, look how awesome. Now, I'm not going to sell this because I probably could get maybe like 15 bucks for it, but I probably can get like a good five dollars in credit at uh, I paid it like two bucks for it. Get like at least five dollars in credit at Buffalo Exchange. That is, I think you need to wear that one. That but one is actually that is so ridiculous. It's amazing. It's too big for me. It's amazing. I love it. Uh uh. But anyway, so dumb. <laughs> That's really. It's really <laughs> bad. That's like Joe Dirt would be wearing that. Uh, I love it. The mole of America. All right. It's my turn again. Yep. Your turn. All right. So uh, first time around that I met up with Barry, um, he had a bunch of jerseys for me and some sweaters. I'm going to show you the sweaters real quick. Uh, or I think I, I think I have both of them. Anyway, one of them, um, and they both look like they're dead stock. Uh, one of them, this is, it says Sunrise Vista Nellis Air Force Base. Air Force Base. Air Force Base. What's wrong with me? I have no idea. Don't you look at me like that. What's going on over here? Are you taking offers and stuff? How about you be present? No, I'm, which I'm not. Somebody messaging me through Facebook, through eBay that is not online. I don't really know what's happening, but. 
Okay. Um, anyway, look at this amazing. Actually, this one looks like it might need to be washed. There's a little spot on it. So I'm going to need to wash this one. Uh, but it's amazing V-neck sweater. I think it's like it's like pink and blue. It's red. gorgeous. That's no, red. This is like a pink. That's red, honey. That's a naysayer. This is pink. That's yeah. red. But when it's not next to your hair, it looks a little bit like hot pinkish. So anyway, I think that looks amazing. And I think I have the other one. Yes. So this one, there were two of these, same size, similar style. Sandra says, I miss my mullet. I bet nobody else does, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> I kid, but all, every boyfriend I ever had in junior high and high school had a mullet, including my first husband. <laughs> so this is an awesome uh, UNLV Rebel Football Foundation member sweater. And I got two of these. Uh, both of these, I got these from Barry again. It's an amazing V-neck sweater. I think it's beautiful. 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 And then I got, I just brought one of these up here to show, but this, uh, he had posted. <laughs> he says, nah, no one else misses it. I, I'm, <laughs> I was just saying. So Mitchell and Ness, the company Mitchell and Ness, they do a lot of throwback jerseys and stuff. And so I actually got five different Mitchell and Ness throwback jerseys and they're all super awesome. Um, and this, I'm just going to show this one. This one, this particular one is new with tags. Uh, the tag says $300 really nice awesome heavy stitch jersey uh you can see right here this particular one is franco harris from the pittsburgh steelers this is from it's like a 1975 replica jersey but i also got what i get sanders bernie um, sanders not bernie sanders <laughs> De deon sanders <laughs> oh, that's funny joe name it <laughs> <laughs> Joe Namath. What the hell? Back when Bernie Sanders <laughs> used, to, used to play football. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, guys, so I, got a, so I got a bunch of these. I got five different, uh, five of these jerseys, and uh, they'll all sell probably, I think, minimum 100 bucks. Um, they should go for a little over 100. Barry Sanders. Thank you, Michael. Okay, I was thinking Dion. Yeah, it was not Dion. It was not Dion. Um, anyway, yeah, so I was really excited about getting all of these jerseys. And then the other thing that I got from him on Thursday when I met up with him in the morning is this jacket. Now, this jacket is amazing. This is a wool and leather jacket. It is Texas Longhorns. But check this out. It's got, it's got embroidery and patches on both sleeves going all the way down. And this is actually from 2005. Um, this is their national champions jacket, but it also shows the other year. This actually seems re new. Like this has no way. It's not new. It's got a couple of marks on it. Oh, okay, stuff. yeah, it's gonna. Uh, yeah, I can't list. I won't list those new. Um, but it's got four different years on it when they were champions, I believe. Um, and if you look, it actually says right here, Longhorns limited edition. Now this jacket. I guess I would get at least a couple hundred dollars for it. I will say there's one sold on um, when you look on worth point, if you have a worth point account, there is one that says it sold this last year for $999 and 99 cents. I don't think I'm going to sell it for a thousand dollars, but mm -hmm. I do think I can sell it for a couple hundred at least. I'll probably list it pretty high and just see what happens see what kind of response I get. But seriously, this you'd jacket. Be, you'd be surprised. I had something similar that was a cowboy's jacket that I couldn't find any other listings on. Uh, this had to be like two years ago or so. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you that I, I picked it up at, at Savers. I paid like 20 bucks and I listed it for like $600 and it sold in like three days. No, I'm going to list it for super high, but I'm just saying like, I'm not going to, after that one comp showing a thousand dollars, I don't think I'm going to sell for a thousand. Yeah. It is a size small. Um, but this is a, it's a really sweet jacket. It's really, really nice. I think that would fit even up to a medium. That's yeah. a big, small, it's oversized. So I sure. basically, I paid Barry, uh, it was $200 for five jerseys, this jacket and three, um, sweaters is I, I believe what it came down to. So he made some money, um, and I'm going to be able to make a lot of money off of those items. And he was able to flip it quick. Uh, cause I think he said those jerseys, he got them at a yard sale. Some guy brought them out from inside the house. I think he paid like five And he bucks said he bought like a bulk thing and he maybe was in like $3 a piece for him. So Crazy. he made some quick cash and now I've got some great inventory to put up. So super, super awesome. Um, all right. You want to go? Yeah. All you right. You guys ready for some sweet hard goods? Hard goods time. Let's go. Okay. So first, 
This is, Cheryl's not watching, but this is a Cheryl thing. Cheryl always likes these. I found a sweet Billy the Big Mouth Bass, original, mm -hmm. 1998, new in the box. I'm Ooh, gonna sell this puppy. the crispy box right there, it's crispy. I paid $5, I'm gonna sell this for about, at any, between 75 and 100. It'll sell fast. The last one I sold within the first day that I had it listed. Don't overlook Billy the Big Mouth Bass, especially if they work. The new ones sell great. Um, kind of, it's like that, that, and uh, what's, what's the what's the game that you always find? The mystery date or whatever? Mall Madness. Mall Madness. That and Mall Madness. It's like you find them, I swear, every other week. All right. So I bought, uh, this is two weeks ago. I went to an estate sale. If you follow me on um, Instagram, you might have seen the post. But I paid 75 bucks. I paid up a little bit. I actually went to the estate sale. I was about 75 people deep when they opened. And I had it on, um, <clears throat> I didn't think I was going to get what I wanted because I had this thing on that I saw in the photos and I knew that was what I wanted. That was what I was going for. And I spent a good amount of money at this estate sale. I got some great stuff. But the thing that I was going for was there. Um, by the time I got to it, it was in the corner of the garage. There had been 50 or 60 people had already gone through there and they had a huge price tag on it. And I went, hmm. You know, 50, 60 people already went past this. I'll I'll give you 50 bucks, 75 bucks for it. Anyway, we we settled on 75. And what I got was a vintage 1980s Commodore computer setup. So this right here is the dot matrix printer. Dot matrix, guys. How many of you remember the old dot matrix? So this will sell for about 150 bucks, just the printer. And again, I paid 75 for the whole kit and caboodle, right? So so listen, guys, you see this stuff sitting in a garage somewhere, and it's like all yellow and everything. Doesn't yeah, mean it's, it's not worth anything. Age, yellows with age. And remember, electronics, they always have like what the part number is. Like It's not like it's hard to look it up. So you shouldn't be overlooking this stuff if you do want to buy hard goods. And sorry, all this stuff is really heavy. Mm -hmm. This is the computer monitor. This thing weighs 30 pounds. Color monitor, guys. Pretty first, fancy. First color monitor. And it does work. We tested it out. Does work. I'm going to sell that for about $300. And then you have the actual computer, which you didn't. And you then I have, have the actual computer, which is another $150 to $200. So all in for the three pieces, I paid $75. I'm going to sell them for about seven or $800 altogether. That's crazy. Michael, it was never white. It was always that off-white color mm -hmm. and a lot of older plastic from the 80s. <clears throat> Yellows over age. Um, no, the yellow is not going to turn back to white. It has oxidized. Yeah, and you wouldn't want to. It doesn't matter as long as the stuff if works. If it works, then people... But they would buy it even if you lives untested. But being able to say that it works... Because I was able to test it, um, I think I can get $300 out of the monitor. Plus shipping. I am um, I am charging for shipping on that. I did charge a flat $50. I'll lose a little bit when it goes to the East Coast. I'll gain a little bit. But with something like that, nobody has it listed for free shipping. Yeah. So if somebody's looking for it, it doesn't really matter. They're going to they're gonna find yours. And uh, Journey, I did part it out. I'm not selling it as a bundle. Mm -hmm. um, everything is heavy as hell. Exactly, Martha. Everything's heavy. The yellow does not go back to the original. It's oxidized. There's nothing you can do. It's not about yeah. cleaning it. It's just that it's changed color over time. And even if you could, why bother? It's a lot of work. It would be a lot of work. And like, it's not. It's pointless. It doesn't make it worth more. And nothing to be afraid to ship it. All you've got to do is I will ship the computer separate from the monitor. So the thing that I first showed was the uh, is a dot matrix printer. The computer I didn't bring upstairs. The computer is um, is before they had towers. It actually just looks like a big clicky clacky keyboard, but it has stuff with it. I also have the hard drive. Every single item I'm selling separately. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Very uh, and yeah, so Sandra, let me know about those um, vintage computer groups. I'd, I'd be happy to pop in there because I have... A bunch of the stuff it will be listed this week so um it does sell pretty well the only thing i've listed so far is the monitor i have it listed for about a 400 right now because i'm, I'm willing to accept offers mm -hmm. and you do you know they do sell for if you put them in auction they sell for high two you know like 275 plus shipping so i think i've have it at 400 plus best offer i'm not dealing with an auction yeah so there's that <sighs> okay the other thing i picked up yesterday i really like to buy the really heavy seriously awkward it, it weighs 50 pounds to even carry it up the stairs to do this for you guys never mind then bring it back down to my office uh but we we all know who did the carrying to bring that up here some of it yes the big thing yep so this i picked up 
uh, again, estate sale. This was day two of the estate sale. I went yesterday. I didn't have a chance to go on Friday. Um, I went yesterday to an estate sale. I spent $150, but what I purchased will be bring me about six to $700. So mm -hmm. um, I saw this again in the photographs, way up on a shelf. It was an estate sale in a home. It was run by a single person. So it was a private comp private guy doing the estate sale, not um, an estate sale company. So I walked in, I asked him prices and he's like, oh, I'll take $150 for each piece. I said, hmm, this is day two of your estate sale. Has anybody asked you about this yet? No, nobody knows what it is. I said, okay, I'll give you $50 a piece if you want to sell them. Otherwise, here's my card. And when you don't sell it, you can call me and I'll pay you less. He sold them. 150 a piece. It is now not that's hardballing, guys. That's how you turn and burn. It's how you turn and burn. You go in there and you tell them what you're gonna pay for it, not what they're asking for. Okay, okay. So this is not a Toyota bumper. It is a Toyota knitting machine. It weighs a bazillion pounds. Yep. I have two. So I purchased the knitting machine. They basically they make sweaters. Um, it, this is new in the box. It is vintage. It is from the fifties or sixties, probably sixties. This one, they don't sell a lot of them. They're very rare. They are uh, made in Japan and they're pretty popular. Again, really heavy mm -hmm. and big. It's about 40 pounds. I've sold these many, many times. If you look up vintage knitting machines, Toyota, you may not find that many. You're going to find a bunch by, the, by a company called brother. That's where you're going to find a lot of them, but the Toyota ones are more valuable. Toyota and Elna, E-L-N-A, two companies that sell a lot of things. So I have two, I have two different models that appear to be new. Um, again, they're gonna be very heavy to ship. I'm not gonna do free shipping. I'll probably just do a flat rate shipping instead of calculated because calculated will look real scary. <clears throat> so I have two of those. They're gonna sell for about three to $400 a piece. Crazy. I paid 50. And then this right here is another part that goes to the knitting machine, which is called the lace carriage. This will sell for about a hundred by itself. And then this one is not that heavy or big. Um, and because I wanted to buy those two items, the other thing that I bought from him <clears throat> is a vintage DVD v VHS player that was new in the box that sells for a little over $200. I asked him to throw that in. So when I bought those three items, I said, just, okay, Here's what you're gonna do. This is what Vicky said. This is what she told her. She says, "Here's what well, here's what's gonna happen, okay? I'm gonna pay you fifty dollars a piece, not hundred and fifty dollars a piece. And then you know what you're gonna do on top of that? You're gonna take less money from me, and you're gonna give me a free VCR DVD combo because I said so, okay? And you know what he said? Okay, he did. So this particular model sells for a little over two hundred dollars when it's new, and this is new in the box. Crazy." I didn't see what Crazy. DJ said, but I got to go read back the comments. And that's it. Now I'm out of breath because everything's super heavy. Crazy. I apologize. So <clears throat> DJ said she doesn't have the soccer balls to do that kind of negotiation. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, uh, it's a four by four. Uh, machine. It could be. Mo wants to know, what does your business card say? It pretty much says, get in touch with me when you want to get less money. Do you have one of my cards up here? You used I to. Um, I might have over here, but maybe not. Nah. Nope. It really doesn't say anything. It has a goofy picture of me. It has my name and address and cell phone number. Uh, it has a link to my store, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Greyhound, I have not looked into shipping Greyhound. I might look into shipping Greyhound um, on those knitting machines, but probably FedEx Round. Um, they're not that difficult. So, I mean, it's long and skinny. It's just heavy. It's the same thing as like shipping a pair of skis, but add 30 yeah. pounds. Uh, so it kind of reminds me of when I was in high school, um, <clears throat> my, one of my buddies, he turned 16 and I remember going with him and his dad to the dealership to find the car for him. And it was like some used, it was like a used little Honda or something like that. And I just remember it had whatever the price was. And the guy was, of course, trying to get get him to pay like a certain price or whatever. And we went in and sat down at the desk. And I remember his dad pulling a check out of his pocket that had already been like, you know, written filled out, out, filled out with the price. I remember him saying like, well, this is what uh, this is what I'm going to pay for. And he like took the check and slid it across the table. And the guy was like, OK. 
And I just remember being like, what? That's how you do it? That's crazy. And I just thought it was like the coolest move ever. Like a, a 16 year old me thought always it was work. super cool. I know, but 16 year old me thought it was pretty sweet. Like this guy could have just said, all right, I'll call you <laughs> if I don't sell them. But here's the thing. If you know what you're looking at, and like, like I said to him, he was this old grizzled guy, whatever. And I said, like I said, you've had this estate sale going for two days. Has anyone even looked at those? They were up on a shelf in the, in the garage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I noticed it right out of the, in the picture. I knew right what it was. And they were in the box. All you could see was Toyota. Yeah. I said, has anybody asked you what they are? Nope. Anybody asked you to look at them? Nope. How yeah. much do you want? He's Things like, oh, I, haven't, I haven't looked them up yet. So he's looking it up. Well, the last one <laughs> sold for, I said, I know what they sold for. I said, I'm a seller. I said, but I'm not going to pay that. I said, I'm, I, I'm willing to pay you $50 a piece. Nobody else is going to buy them. Yeah. He said, well, I have three pieces over there. I said, where's the third? I didn't see it. And that was that smaller carriage piece, which only goes for a hundred. I would not have paid 50 for that by itself, but all three together, $150. Sure. What's that DVD? VCR I said, throw it, throw it in for free, bitches. Throw in the DVD player. I'll pay 150. <laughs> and he's like, okay. Yeah. So much. I was pretty happy. All right. So is that, do you still um, have anything left? <clears throat> No, that's it. I'm done. I've got some good stuff left. We're going, we're running long today, guys. But I feel like we got over 200 people watching right now, and I feel like we got some good stuff. And I saved the best for last. What do you think about that? Woo what? What was the one that you had the other day? All right, yeah, Vicky. That's so let me do while you're gathering up your stuff. Let me do one more uh, giveaway. But don't go anywhere, guys, because you're not going to believe what I have to show you. Would you? So we don't lose everybody because we're going over real far. But I want to make we're sure we're going to lose everybody because I got some amazing things to show. Uh, let's see. A lot of people buy you VHS still. Yeah, they do. Certain models, they do. Uh, okay. So somebody had said we should do this as a trivia. So what's the question? Oh, something now about the now show, maybe. Me. Um, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, hmm. All right, here's the trivia. The first person to the first person who can say who I got this hat from and what it was a present for, go now, you'll be the winner. Let's go. All right, I'm ready to answer who down. and what the occasion was. Go now, now, now. First person, first person. If you don't know by now, then you have something wrong with you. You guys, you got to answer. You got to answer. You got to have both of the answers in your answer together. I said you got to have the name and the occasion that I got it for. They got to be together, guys. Come on. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Nope. Oh. Nope. Nobody's gotten it yet, guys. Yep, Kara Cooper just won. Kara, you just earned your T-shirt. You earned your GD t-shirt. Can't even believe it. Can't even believe it. <laughs> it came from Dana. She did give it to her for Christmas. Yep. You guys were That's close. Right. That's right. Hasn't left my hat, my head since. It is literally, Eve. she has not had anything different on her damn head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Are you here for the live viewing? Kara said then Kara says Dana Hanukkah. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go right to the T-shirts, but before uh, first, I think it was it might. She's have been, not on Skittles. I'm not. <laughs> it might have been uh, Justin Pacman. Um, somebody asked about identifying Letterman jackets. Um, how can you do that, and is it worth it to before you list it? Listen, yeah. I will give it a good college try. Har har. I'll give it a good college try first, because yeah, I mean, if you can identify the school that the jackets from, it's definitely gonna make it easier to find a buyer. Um, but don't, you know, after you, if you can't find it, you can't find it. So speaking of, yes, Sunny, she has hair. She has that head under there, but she has hair. I do have hair. Yeah. 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 How about that? Mm, that's pretty good right there. Oh God. <laughs> Please no. She's on Tide Pods. She's on something. So look at this awesome, uh, this awesome like Letterman jacket that I got. This is super cool. I don't know if it's a women's cause it's size 32. Like that's super, super tiny. It's like a super well, small. Well, it buttons like a man's. It does button like a man's. But anyway, it's this is definitely a vintage. Look at that. It's the uh, 60s. Butwin label, probably, yeah, 60s um, at least. Mm -hmm. And But I have no idea. It's got an E on it. So if anybody has any, any um, suggestions or ideas of what school this might be from, 
It's got an E, it's got a little music patch. Um, it does have somebody's name uh, embroidered inside. It's J Weaver. J Weaver yeah. was a teeny tiny band geek, as Dana says. Yeah, teeny tiny band geek, J Weaver. So yeah, anybody, E for excellent. Oh, Sunny, look at you, look at you. You gave that one a good college try. <laughs> There you go. All right, so uh, <clears throat> borderline hoard, hoarderish. I like the high energy. I'm like that, but asked if I do a line before my lives. It's a natural high. She's okay. coming at us like a spider monkey. All right, so <laughs> I'm just gonna go straight to this t-shirt. So here's what happened. Here's what happened, guys. Barry, our good buddy Barry, he posted on Instagram a little mini haul of t-shirts and Vicky actually saw it first and she was like, uh, you might want to look and see what Barry's got. And I went and looked and I was like, Barry, I want it now. Give it to me. And so he was like, well, hold on. I'm getting some offers and stuff. And then he came back to me and he was like, okay, I can totally sell them to you. And I'm like, give me a price. He gave me a price. And I was like, bring them on over to my house. And it's a deal. So he showed up yesterday. Not only did she pay them the price he wanted, but she even gave him a cinnamon roll. That's right. I even got him a cinnamon roll. I went to get us uh, cinnamon rolls and she was like, I was like, look, I got one for Barry. And she's like, that's kind of weird. And I'm like, oh, they're delicious cinnamon rolls. And he's going to be real happy when I give it to him. And you know what? He was happy. He was happy. Yeah. Anyway, guys. He's probably happier with the money, but what else? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, Metallica and justice for all, bitches. Let's get in close. Let's get in tight here. Let's look at that. 1988. That is legit right there. Metallica and Justice for All. These are both size large. Um, in good shape. In really good shape. Like they definitely have been worn a couple of times, but I would say very little. Like whoever had this, uh, their single stitch, these are legit. Oh, just, just magic. It what do you think, magic. Dana? Just magic. magic. So magic. 200 oh, What did you pay for it? Let's put it this way. Okay, so I paid... Well, okay, so there were there were seven, five, seven t-shirts. Seven t-shirts. I paid two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, three of those t-shirts uh, were really what I was really putting the big money down for. Um, I ended up paying him three hundred dollars because he brought some other stuff over that he had he'd been out garage sailing and stuff. But this shirt right here, um, I listed them last night. I already got two, three different offers for a hundred dollars. Um, but I. I can sell. I think I can. I think I can get two hundred guys. I think I'm gonna get two hundred out of this. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, amazing T-shirt. I think I can get two hundred bucks out of this. Um, Let me guess tell what? you, borderline guess hoarderish. Nothing else matters is the first song a lot of people our age, if you're in our age bracket, learned on the guitar. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it's the first song my brother learned on the guitar, and my brother is 39 this year, and he is a guitar player, and that was the, that was his thing. So we were just hanging out in 1988. Now we're just going to take a little step, a little step, a little step back to 1987. Jam right there. Another Metallica t-shirt, guys. Metal up your ass. Look at the back. Yeah. Woo, 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 woo. This is a beautiful, beautiful t-shirt. Let's go ahead and we're going to look again. Now, most of these t-shirts, you're going to see um, ones that are listed for like $17.99, $21.95. Um, because they do reprints of these. Uh, so we, what you want to see, what you want to check on is you want to look and see what the copyright is. So this right here says 1987. Again, you want to check and see, does it have uh, the telltale single stitch? Um, this one actually has the copyright info on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you just want to make sure that you have I'm a little bit flashbacks to junior high right now from these t-shirts, the t-shirts and the albums. But again, this one is also in yes, amazing. Yes, junior high, old lady. <laughs> Amazing condition. Sorry, she was in elementary school. It's okay. So again, I think I've gotten a couple offers for this on this one for a hundred bucks as well. Um, but I'm 87. I was in seventh grade. I'm gonna get 200 bucks out of each of these. That's my plan. Um, and then the other T-shirts that were in here. Um, did I not put the real good one? Apparently, did I not put the Tommy one in here? Anyway. No, that's not it. That's a Bart one. So for some reason, I didn't put it in here. I don't know why. Why not? But oh yeah, I do. I was like, why didn't I not do this? This is the other one that was is the big seller. Tommy, pull my finger. This is actually Beavis and Butthead. And yes, in honor of this T-shirt, I'm wearing my Doyle Beavis and Butthead uh, T-shirt because uh, I love it. Um, 
This t-shirt right here, not going to sell for as much as these, but it sells for a lot. It, it, it has gone up in auction re recently and gone for like $122. I should be able to still get like $150, I think, for this if I let it sit for a little bit. Um, again, single stitch. Um, and this one's probably been reprinted too, but this is the legit one right here. You just, again, you want to make sure you're looking and seeing your copyright stuff. What does it say on their t-shirts? What, is it? what do you mean? On Beavis and Butthead. Oh, on not, their t-shirts. Not Winger. This one, no. it's, it's the regular ones. They're um, skulls. I told her if she ever finds one that has Winger, I want it. <laughs> it's their ones that they usually wear, the skulls and uh, Death Rock. DJ, we're the same age. I was in seventh grade in 87. And I want you guys to pay attention to this, too. Uh, it says Stanley um, DeSantis. This guy, there are a lot of t-shirts out there. Look up his name and t-shirt and look at comps. Because there's a lot of really cool stuff from like the 90s, a lot of pop culture, like television shows and movies um, that his name is on and they go for a lot. Uh, I sold a Scream 2 one for like 100 bucks this last year. So, um, yeah. And then just some other cool ones like this uh, Ren and Stimpy. This one I'm hoping to get like $100 for. Um, it's really cool. Uh, and then a couple of. Oh, DJ, ones. you're a year older than me. I'm 675. Bartman, this will also sell. This one also sells for a lot. I might be able to get a hundred bucks for that one. Um, and then there's this like basic Bart Simpson one, it's stained, but I might be able to get like 50 bucks for it. So that's okay. it, guys. That's it. What do you think? I think that was a pretty good deal. Like I said, I got some other stuff in that in that bundle as well. But those t-shirts and a couple other ones were the ones I paid $250 for. Mm -hmm. uh, but man, I am going to flip that around sometime in the next week or so, probably. Um, I'll fast. be able to sell those. Yeah. Like I said, I've already gotten like multiple offers for $100 on each of those Metallica ones. And I'll be able to get a couple hundreds, hundred out of those. So seriously, guys. Oh, happy birthday to Ariana. She turned seven today. What? Stefan's a fun age. Yeah. Happy birthday, honey. We're some random people on the YouTubes, and we're saying happy birthday. What's up? And happy birthday to Picker Pam, who is 60 today. Yep. Anyway, Gone with the Wind. What? What's going on with Gone with the Wind? I have no idea. Anyway, guys, I'm super stoked. I'm loving my new buddy, Barry. And yeah, I'm going to feed him some cinnamon rolls. So that means he's going to think of me first every time he finds the cool stuff. He does find some cool stuff. He does find some this cool stuff. This was a long show. Thank you, everybody, for sticking with us. We still have almost 200 people live. I think we were about 250 at our highest point, from what I could tell. Um, I don't always look at the screen. But yeah, Gone with the Wind. Thank you, Big Mac. Yes, long. So we were here almost a full two hours. We appreciate you guys sticking around. It was fun. Yep. It was a good show, guys. Anyway, uh, we will see you guys on Wednesday. Don't forget, we're having the Data Mind show. We will have Brooks and we'll have everyone's favorite, bossiest of all the bosses. Teresa Cox is going to be on the show um, to help us talk about Data Mind. And so, if you have been looking for different tools um, for your business, you're going to want to check that show out, especially what we were talking about with the um, D list and sell similar tool. Mm -hmm. What's going on over there, Rippy Miggy? Just I, pull I, it, just rip it, just do it, just rip it. There you go. There you go. Anyway, guys, we really appreciate uh, you guys hanging out with us, and we're going to get back to work. we got to do a little bit more work out in the garage, and then I'm hoping to get some listing done. And then, ooh, ooh, guess what, guys? Date night. Date night. We're going to go see a movie. Guess what? I think uh, Sandra's going to be into this. We're going to go see The Prodigy. Mm -hmm. Evil kids. Who doesn't like scary movies with evil children in them? Me. Yeah? Pretty much. Hey, Justin Packman just busted out the four ninety nine super chat. Says thanks for all the knowledge that we've been busting out super here. Super chat yourself right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm gonna super chat us right out of here. This one's for you, Justin Packman. Justin, super chat. We're gonna do it like heavy metal. Wah, 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 super chat, super chat, super chat, super chat. Well, you like that? Now give me some devil horns. Come on. You you won't even have to pay. What's his name? Who tried to like copyright him? Right? Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons. Because you know he invented the, the he invented the double horns. I, I, I super chat. Know. Super chat. Super chat. Actually, it'd be Ronnie James Dio. Uh, not, yeah. Not Gene Simmons. But he tried to copyright him. Super chat. Super chat. Super chat. <laughs>